What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another live broadcast of the Engadget Podcast. I'm senior editor Devendra Hardwar. This week, I'm joined by UK Bureau Chief Matt Smith. Hey, Matt. All hey, the Devendra. Other How Hello. are you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm surviving. Congratulations. We're doing a remote CES. That's the way to do it. <laughs> That's totally the way to do it. We're all we're all we're all kind of overloaded. Uh, we have basically half of Engadget at the show, and a bunch of us doing stuff remotely. Also joining us today, podcast producer Ben Elman. Hello, Ben. Hello. Hello. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Who is in the chat? Who should we call out? Uh, so we've got, uh, oh, I mean, some guy named Devendra, Har Devendra Hardware. Who, who cares mm -hmm. about that? But um, is it our bonus or our bonus? Our bonus. Darren sure. and skilled buyer Daniel Diaz. Ice Cream D currently wins for the best chat name, but that's going to be quickly displaced if I can poop twice a day. Yay comes on. Mm -hmm. uh, so happy CES, everyone. Happy is in quotes, of course. Um, it seems like whatever governing body does CES every year just wants to ruin the Christmas of every tech reporter person. Oh, Dev, you're uh, muted. That's how it's been forever. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. What's up, everybody? How how are things going in the UK, Matt? I know you're you're off on another timeline, but you still have to follow some CES stuff. So I'm sorry. Yeah, that's the thing. So it, like, there's some funny, you know, internal and gadget CES meetings that I think I get a free <laughs> hall pass not to attend, and you know exactly which ones I'm talking about, Devendra. So that's mm -hmm. pretty good. Like that's the worst bit avoided. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, like definitely, you know email questions to people that i need the answer for asap and i get the answer at 3 a.m my time um, <laughs> that's not great um so yeah what i've done best of is to kind of forward the most important ones to other people on the floor and then just kind of lean back and let other people let god take the reins pretty much steer, steer the ship i mean you're also doing a lot of early morning work too so yeah that's you guys are making thing. sure everything is good to go before uh the east coast day starts and before cs starts so that's all good that's the game Look, plan for sure uh -huh. yeah how's it been for you devendra i think you've been particularly so many, busy so many embargoes. Year. let's actually let's save a bit of this for the show yeah and we'll just we'll do some we'll chat about this on the show um but just so you all know who are tuning in We'll be diving into like all the CES stuff. So a bunch of like weird, wild gadgets, some of the biggest announcements. We're not going to cover everything because there is just way too much. And later on this episode, Chris Bell is going to join us to talk about her on the ground experience. So that should be fun. <clears throat> Hello to Plays and Samsey. Hello and have a good evening. I don't know where you are, but I mean, maybe it's uh, the UK. Ice Cream D is also mm -hmm. from the UK. Um, and yeah, I think we should just go in on it. It's good to go. All right, let's do our clap and our silence. Oh, yes. And we'll be good to go. Yes. Okay. So everybody who's watching the chat or, or in the chat, um, watching from home, please remember that uh, we might not be able to respond uh, live. Uh, we're recording uh, for the podcast, so we don't want to make the audio listeners that listen later uh, feel left out and kind of confused that we're just talking to chat. So we're going to have specific segments where we talk to chat that'll be, you know, maybe in 30 or 45 minutes, and I'm going to be logging questions. But the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to count down from three. At the end of three, all of us are going to make a sound that helps me like sync up the audio mm -hmm. chat. If you want to clap also, I always appreciate that. It makes you makes me feel like you believe in us. So counting down from three, two, one. And some silence. I'll let you know when the silence is over. Okay, silence over. Cool, cool. Let's All get right. on with it. And apologies, folks uh, watching us live. I woke up with like a scratchy throat because I've basically been writing since like Friday nonstop throughout the weekend. It's been it's been crazy. A lot of late nights. Um, we had a review that had an embargo for the middle of CS. That's never happened before. That's really annoying. Um, yeah. So yeah, thank you Nvidia for that. <clears throat> All right, we will tune in. Let me just pull up the show notes. <clears throat> Let's go in three, two, one. What's up, Internet, and welcome back to the Engadget Podcast. I'm Senior Editor Devendra Hardwar. 
as you met. <laughs> okay, I've not been used to doing this before, so yeah. this is exciting. Yeah. Uh, and I'm Matt Smith, the UK Bureau Chief at Engadget.com. Hello, hello, Matt. Uh, this is the CES episode. CES 2023 is happening right now. We're kind of at the tail end of it, even though technically I think this is the first day as we're recording this on Thursday. But uh, over at Engadget, like we are a CES uh, from the beginning of December, honestly, even earlier, um, talking to companies, working on a lot of things. So we've got a lot of stuff to catch up on some big announcements, some weird gadgets as usual. Sherlyn is busy at the show, so she can't make it for this episode, uh, but we will have Chris Abel uh, joining us later on to talk about the on the ground experience. As always, folks, if you're enjoying the Gadget Podcast, please be sure to leave us a review on iTunes um, or wherever you get your podcast, and be sure to subscribe as well. Drop us an email at podcast at engadget.com. And uh, if you're around on Thursday mornings, we typically do a live stream on our YouTube channel around 10.30 a.m. Eastern. That's 10.30 a.m. Um, we used to be 10 a.m., but uh, we want a little more breathing room, and uh, Sherlyn wants more time to, to prepare for the show. So join us 10.30 a.m. It's a fun time. Sometimes we show off gadgets, and we often do Q&A. <clears throat> All right, let's just talk about going into the CES. So Matt, <clears throat> so Matt, it's been what two years since we've actually had a decent on the ground experience at CES. Um, like when the pandemic, uh, what twenty twenty one fully remote 2022 there was some on the ground stuff but we didn't go at all now we have basically half of our team there half of us doing it remotely you and i are doing it from home um how, how do you feel though going into the ces it's uh it's interesting isn't it i thought it wasn't going to be as kind of uh, notable as it has right. been so yeah. far yeah like i thought it'd be more chill yeah yeah <laughs> yeah totally that mm -hmm. like i think especially in the kind of the main silos of uh pc tv and auto it's as busy as it's ever been mm -hmm. and that's kind of surprised me for sure for sure it does seem like a lot of companies actually had news and i think prior prior the problem last year was even when there was a virtual ces there really wasn't that much news to go around. Um, you know, everybody's been affected by the pandemic and slowdowns in so many things too, like in manufacturing and in product development. So it does feel like this year, like we are back into the swing of things because we've got like the usual new batches of PC hardware, a lot of new TV tech, um, some weird gadgets, which are always fun to see. Um, it does feel like CS is like back in action. Um, it, it feels very familiar to me right now, at least. Yeah, I, I do wonder, like, from, from the things you've been picking up at the kind of evening shows at Las Vegas, it has seemed like a lot of the smaller companies have possibly, or startups have shied away this year. Mm -hmm. That's just my, my kind of spider sense. Like, I have nothing to back that up with, with numbers, but <laughs> like the kind of the weird, bizarre conversation water cooler gadgets, there's like literal water coolers in some cases. Uh -huh. Like, there's less of them this year than I think I've seen when I've been kind of trawling the show floor. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it, it is weird. Like a CES is sometimes just a dumping ground for a lot of companies too, who kind of go there and don't have a plan about the gadgets they're doing. Yeah. It seems a little more focused this year, at least. Uh, we're going to talk about some of these things, but we have at least two P analyzers. Um, there, there are smart toilets Finally. that cost a ton of money. Yeah, I wanna, I wanna know what's going on with my P. Finally, mm -hmm. there's a way to know immediately. Thank you, CES. Um, but you know what, Matt? <clears throat> Let me just clear this. But you know what, Matt? Let's uh, let's start with some of the major topics going into the show. And I think for me, CES is always a very big show when it comes to PC hardware, uh, both the internal hardware and laptops and things like that too. And we've got some like big all around news. Um, and unfortunately, like a lot of things that land on me to cover. Uh, <laughs> that includes Intel's uh, 13th gen mobile chips, which are gonna be going up to 24 cores. Um, and AMD also announced their new Ryzen 7000 mobile CPUs and Radeon mobile graphics, um, NVIDIA, unveiled the RTX 4070 Ti, which is um, sort of mid-range. It is their cheapest 4000 series GPU, but it's still 799. And they also unveiled RTX 4000 mobile graphics coming to laptops. So basically at CES, we typically find the hardware that's gonna be powering all of our PCs for the rest of the year. And this is it. It's a pretty wide slate, fast new hardware. The CPUs in particular seem pretty wild um just to reiterate like intel is using a hybrid design so they're saying 24 cores um that is made up of um <clears throat> that's made up of a combination of 
performance cores and um, efficient cores, and it's kind of how they get there. So the top end chip, the uh, i9-13980HX, has 24 cores uh, with eight performance cores and 16 efficient cores, just, just absolutely wild. So I cannot wait to benchmark that chip and see how it goes. Into um, AMD's thing, on the other hand, is finally bringing 16 core Ryzen chips to laptops, but the difference is these are 16 like full power cores. So it is kind of like a difference in strategy Intel and AMD are taking. On my desktop right now, I'm running um, one of the AMD's, <clears throat> on my desk, sorry. <clears throat> oh God, he's dying. I'm dying. Uh, on my drink some, no, drink some water. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Don't think it's gonna help the Vindra, but sure. Yeah, <clears throat> let's go. On my desktop right now, I'm running one of the newer AMD chips, and it, it, it is crazy fast, but I'm also hearing from people running 13th Gen Intel that they're even faster, um, just judging uh -huh. from the reviews and things like that. So, hey, what do you expect, Matt? Like, with all this hardware, what are you thinking you'd like to see from laptops this year? I like this, this, this notion that the two major players are going in completely different directions. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I think you know it isn't one chip to fit all use cases so i'm kind of intrigued by the fact this going in so many divergent directions now and we'll get to it later at some of these uh, laptop designs that like it's a gaming pc but it's not going to last that long or it's a gaming <laughs> pc but it's not that strong uh, or it's a workhorse machine for video but it might not have the killer gaming screen like there's all these different mm -hmm. use cases I, I'm, I'm amazed to think there's enough demand across the spectrum of hardcore laptop users for all of them but it's a great t it's a great time to pick up a laptop if, if you have a very specific use case yeah it does seem like the variety is going to be very nice for a lot of people uh, because there are different voltages too so both intel and amd have like lower power chips which are like 15 watts and under meant for ultra portables and intel's going even lower in some cases um with their really like thin and light chips but now there's like more options between 15 and 35 watts, 35 watts and 65 watts and like going up and up and up. The higher you go, like beyond 35 watts, like that's a gaming laptop basically. Yeah. Um, but more voltage means more power, means less battery life, but it does mean like that laptop can basically do desktop work. Um, I'm really interested to see like how these new chips will roll with the RTX 4090, which is actually gonna be making it into laptops. Um, and even into the Asus uh, Zephyrus G14, which is a pretty thin 14-inch gaming mo notebook. You know, that thing is under four pounds. The last one we reviewed was like 3.6 pounds. Um, 4090 in that just sounds pretty wild, but it is worth clarifying that uh, uh, NVIDIA's notebook GPUs are inherently slower. They're a little like underclocked. They're not as good as the desktop version. So in a sense, that number is just kind of branding, but still it's um, just the idea of 4090 power in a notebook like the G14 is pretty wild to me. Yeah. Are you looking to upgrade anytime soon, Matt? Or are you just like, like seeing the new hardware? I know I've said this like probably three times ago when I was on this podcast that I need to just kind of jump into la like PC laptops again. Yeah. Uh, I run yeah, yeah, MacBooks yeah. for work. I am a console gamer by and large, but I still have a back catalog of Steam games from back when I did used to have a gaming PC. Um, I'm intrigued by the Steam Deck, so maybe that'll nudge me back into you should, PC gaming. You should maybe really consider the Steam Deck if you have an existing Steam library, because that thing has changed my life. Yeah. Yeah, I'm hearing that a lot. Um, but I just wonder how much, how much, <laughs> how many gaming platforms is too many gaming platforms? You know, at no some such point. Thing. No, I such knew thing. You, I knew that was going to be your answer as well. Um, having said that, um, am I jumping ahead a, li a little bit? We haven't yeah, got it go in this it. rundown here, but mm -hmm. uh, the Dell G series mm -hmm. gaming laptops mm -hmm. are surprisingly attractive. Yeah, like I did, I saw those. Uh, so Sam Rutherford wrote those up over at Engadget, and Dell typically unveils a new slew of like premium Alienware stuff, and um, the G Series is their like budget line. So yeah. G Series like this year, they have colors, they have kinda like cool. nice designs, kind of cool. Yeah. It's kind of like '80s retro almost. Yeah. Um, and they're cheap. Like they still cost under a thousand dollars to begin with. So that's pretty pretty well. Maybe do you want to go that route? Matt, is that the thing? I feel like you're maybe, more premium. That's the thing. Um, but yeah, when, you know, the premium in gaming laptops means mm -hmm. it's good for half a year and then you're you're terrible. You you are basically <laughs> spending two thousand dollars or more for hardware, yeah, that will be obsolete. Real quick. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I was thinking maybe a G series is a good place to mm -hmm. see whether whether I could fit it into my life without sacrificing thousands upon thousands of dollars um, for sure, at the for same sure. time. I would recommend like even more of a mid-range one. So that's why I like the Asus G series. Um, the yeah. Asus G series are not budget machines, but the G14, G15, 
I believe there's a G16. Um, those are all like pretty powerful. They don't look like razor blades. They don't feel like razor blades, but they're still like really good build quality and great, like great performance in general. So that'd be good for you. Yeah, that's good. I mean, like mm -hmm. while we're talking about Dell as well, the Alienware have revealed a new 18 inch. Yes. How portable, how lovingly portable. How lovingly portable. It's, uh, <laughs> I mean, they're, they're just going big. Like the weird thing oh is um, when a lot of PC makers were going super thin and light, Dell was just like, nah, for, yeah. for at least some of its lineup. So they have the M series Alienware desktops or laptops, and then they have the X series and the X series are super thin and light and less powerful. The M series are where they go all out. And this year for the first time, actually not for the first time, they've had, I believe an 18 inch in like 2004 or something like yeah, some, some yeah, early so. time. Yeah, um, way but back then. this is their first 18 inch laptop in a very long time. The M18 looks massive. Um, I figure I have the weight here um yeah it is uh, it is heavy so this thing here's the thing like they announced um an m16 and m18 and new x16 models and the x16 is supposed to be the thin and light um the x16 itself weighs um quite a ton like it, it weighs a bit more than i expected uh, the X16 is six pounds, which is yeah. more than I expect from most gaming laptop companies. Um, I believe the Razer Blade 17 clocks in around six pounds or something like that. So Dell is still, even with their thin lights, still going higher than everybody else. But they have a new design. Um, their design language is more refreshed. What is going up mm -hmm. on with those uh, trackpads as well? The trackpads have RGB. And they've had RGB trackpads for a while, but they just light up. That's all it is. But it looks yeah. cool with the X series. Um, <laughs> it it, it kind of it 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 it's like breathing LEDs, you know. And yeah. uh, I like I guess the style. You, is there a degree of customability? Can you customize yeah. those? To yeah, kind of you can customize the lights, and you, you can also customize the rear lights. Um, this year, Dell is basically um, polishing the overall design language they've had before. Uh, it's called Legend. That is when um, the Alienware started looking like basically eighties computers like from 80 sci-fi movies and right. uh they've slowly refined it uh there used to be a lot of like annoying ugly black glossy plastic that's gone it's a uh, it's a little easier to hold now they're a little thinner they just look really good too so if you want a laptop that's like striking i feel like you're paying a little for that just to look different than the crowd right yeah yeah there are a bunch of other laptops so basically Every laptop maker has announced something new. Asus has a whole bunch of ROG models. We just want to highlight some of the ones that are kind of interesting. And I think one that really caught my eye are HP's new Dragonfly Pro laptops, which are not gaming laptops. In fact, they're very, very simple. Like they're meant to be almost MacBook-like, um, you know, colorful computers that consumers can easily buy. They have like very understandable specifications. And I feel like that's, that is something we have not seen very much in the PC market. Um, and these things look cool. Have you seen some of these laptops, Matt? Yeah, I was intrigued by them. I like, mm -hmm. um, I'm more baffled by the idea that the Chromebook kind of has better specs for some reason Ugh. in certain regards. That doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, I'm just looking at on my notes now, but yeah, like mm -hmm. the Chromebook version of this, uh, the Dragonfly Pro. <laughs> the Chromebook has... has a 2560 by 1600. Yeah, yeah, which, and then the Windows one only has like 1920 mm -hmm. by 1200, which really doesn't make any sense to anyone, mm -hmm. but they've done it. I do not know why that is a weird thing. I feel like, um, so 2560 is 1440p um, plus technically and uh, 1920 by 1200 is like 1080 plus. So that is pretty wild. Um, so I wonder if it's like so they, they can get like mm -hmm. Chromebook, like, um, you know, that uh, the, the cloud gaming push Google made mm -hmm. with Chromebook. I wonder if it's so that you can get like accredited for that or something or like, you maybe know, slide maybe into just, that category. Yeah. There don't seem to be any stickers on these boxes. No. And it's unclear. Like these are definitely not like streaming game streaming computers or, you know, computers just uh, targeted for any specific purpose like that. They just like, Hey, here, here's some yeah. really nice looking computers. Um, yeah. The Chromebook has an eight megapixel webcam and a 1200 nit LCD as well. The windows one has a five megapixel webcam and a what 400 nit screen. On. I am. I feel like there was a mistake. I feel like maybe they should have swapped <laughs> those specs for the people who really want to do someone, more on their computers. Someone copy and pasted into the wrong part of the spreadsheet. Uh -huh, and now uh -huh. we have to and live with kept, the consequences. They just kept building it forever, yeah. <laughs> forever. Um, but they look like really um, clean. They remind me yeah, of this laptop quite a bit too. So 
I do want to see more of this from PC makers. I feel like that's interesting for sure. Anything, there's also LG's updated grams, which I wanted to call up because the grams have always been like among the super thin, the kind of the first batch of laptops that really went for extreme thinness, extreme lightness. They're getting even lighter this year. They're getting hidden touchpads, which I guess are a little like the XPS 13 plus where they kind yeah, of disappear into yeah. the bezel. Um, <clears throat> Hidden touchpad, it has LED backlighting that illuminates when you touch it. So I guess that's like the thing. It's not fully, fully hidden. But uh, yeah, the new Gram Ultra Slim is LG's thinnest notebook yet. It weighs um, 998 grams, 9% Whoa, lighter than kilo. the models. Yeah, under a kilo. I, what's that in pounds? Do you have the... You know, exact? I don't know. I, I run in kilograms. So let mm -hmm. me just... One kilogram, one kilogram in pounds. It's 2.2 .2 pounds. Yeah. That's, that's kind of like the grams we were talking have about run... six mm -hmm. for that for that alienware one earlier for the alienware uh, the grams have always run at like two and a half pounds and under so yeah. this is kind of in that line it has a 15.6 oled screen with 1080p resolution um another computer that just seems like very nice very chill not as uh it's probably going to be more much more expensive than those hps which are more mainstream, but I do like the gram. I do like the idea of it. Like um, LG's Gramster mm -hmm. has always been a kind of curio to me because they keep making them year in, year out. So which means that there is definitely an audience <laughs> for it. By ne you know, you never see someone with an LG laptop. I've never seen it anywhere. in coffee cup in New York, it, working anywhere. Yeah. It is it is kind of wild. LG gave up on phones, right? Several years yeah. ago. So they're not afraid to like give up on a category if it's not doing well. So clearly something is working out for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, every time I've had to like had to when I've had to work, work with them or cover them at a trade show, I'm always like, oh, this is actually really nice and surprisingly solid. I think you go to it and you're like, oh, this is going to be one of those kind of plasticky, chintzy feeling laptops. But yeah. it's always solid, fast. And yeah, it's LG, so it always has a really good screen usually. The screens are usually really good. Um, yeah. I think I reviewed one like 2018, and one thing I noticed is that the case felt um, almost like a car, like car alloy. So it was like a little yeah. more flexible than I'd like. That's what kind of makes it so light. Um, but I don't, I don't want a laptop where I can push this case and like start to feel <laughs> the internals. Like that seems like bad. That seems bad if you're putting it into your into your book bag or anything. Um, yeah, we've we've got a nice selection of laptops. By the way. Go to Engadget.com, you know, check out all our stuff. If you Google um, CS2023 um, or just hit the CS2023 tag in any of our stories, you'll see everything we've got going on. And uh, we're going to be pumping out stories like all week, probably into next week. One so, final honorable mm -hmm. mention, by the way, for the LG Gram. Um, respect that their, their press photo has a guy propping his LG Gram on a pile of books and magazines because that is mm -hmm. real life use. And I respect That's real that. life. That's how you That's podcast. how I live my mm -hmm. life. Yes. One thing I wanted to call out in the uh, in the PC side too, we've talked about Dell's concept Nix before, and that was this weird idea that Dell had of like giving you a home server that you could basically <laughs> stream games to your TV or to other devices. Uh, maybe on your TV, you could have a split screen game experience. I did not quite like it very much last year. This year they showed off a controller and uh, I, I've got feelings. So go check it out. Mm -hmm. It's Dell's concept Nix gamepad. I wrote it up and we did a video of it too. Um, it looks like your typical Xbox 360 gamepad or Xbox One gamepad at this point. Um, but instead of a directional pad, there is um, a circular touchpad. And that is very strange to me. It seems like Dell um, basically took like a hybrid version of the Steam controller and mix it with an Xbox gamepad and you kind of get this thing. And have to say, not not a fan, not a huge fan of it. I couldn't actually play any games with it, but holding this thing, it did make it, it did remind me of like what I didn't like about the Steam controller of like you don't have precise uh, directions with a trackpad. It may be good for like mouse scrolling in some PC games, but it's not quite the same. Like looking at this thing, Matt, like what are your, what are your initial thoughts? I just thought it was a rebadged, uh, they've just taken stock of all those unused Google Stadia controllers and just whacked some Dell branding on it. And just some Dell. I it. mean, the Stadia controllers didn't have a touchpad, right? Or did they? No, they didn't. No, 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 no. But the, the whole shape looks so much like the Stadia controller is unbelievable. That's... I mean, I feel like every controller looks like this now, right? Like it's everybody 90, basically yeah. took the this singularity. idea. Um, it's basically the expanded Super Nintendo controller or shrunken down Dreamcast controller, however you want to put it. <laughs> uh, there are some interesting ideas. Um, they did add uh, capacitive touch sensitivity along the top left and right buttons. So you can like swipe your fingers for different things. There okay. are buttons on the rear. The triggers are like 
programmable for different things. So sort of like the PlayStation 5 controller. And along the bottom, if you look like between the LEDs there, there are two um, scrolly wheels, like scroll wheels that help you <laughs> go between different uh, settings on the controller. So some really cool ideas here, but I didn't, I just didn't like the way this thing felt. I think they're um they're also their analog sticks felt really cheap too um it is an improvement for dell from the uh alienware concept ufo controller which looked like basically a jaguar controller if you remember that back in the day um that thing was awful i hate holding that so this is clearly a step <laughs> forward but these are concepts they're not really going to go anywhere for dell and um i tried really hard not to make the dell people cry but when i'm disappointed in something i'm like I, I, I do be like, oh, so why why did you do this? That's an why? interesting choice. Why? Why? Yeah. This feels not great. Um, please explain yourself. Um, check out our video. Check out the write-up of this thing, too. And you know what? Let me know what you think, because I've already had people on Twitter uh, yelling at me, saying, I am not recognizing the brilliance of this uh, controller <laughs> revolution. I'm like, guys, I, I've been holding game controllers since I, fi since I was five, you know? So I, like, that stuff is ingrained in me it, among the, like, earliest gadgets. Um earliest gadgets I've ever touched, but also the feeling of like what a bad controller is, is something I learned really early on as a kid, like with third parties and stuff. So, you know what, like there, there's just uh, so much to go into there. Like, I, I want to try this thing. I do want to do that. Um, so yeah, that's PC stuff. Uh, we're going to be looking at a lot of the laptops. Basically a lot of these laptops that we're talking about are going to be launching in February and March. Um, so we're going to be reviewing some, I'm really interested in like testing out what those new Intel and AMD chips can do. I just want to get the Zephyrus G14, to be honest. Like I want to see what's possible there. So um, yeah, let's move on to some of our other, let's move on to some of our other CS news. Okay. Ben, did you want to, you just want to bring in a landing to close that section? Yeah, to close that section. Okay. <clears throat> uh, sure. It would be good if you drank a little bit more water yeah. and then maybe drank more water consistently through I will try. The, rest the, rest, the recording. The rest of your life. Through well, yes, the rest of your life water. too. I will drink a more water. <clears throat> okay, so. And go uh, into TV oh, yeah. stuff. Oh, uh, no, the TV, st I thought the TV stuff was stuff that we were going to talk about. I thought we were going to do TV mobile, like accessibility with, um, Carissa. What? No, 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 no. Okay. No. All um, right. yeah, I sent Carissa an email last night to so go look at that. Uh, those are questions for Carissa. Cause like she's, she's, she's not going to have much to say on TV and stuff. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yep. Okay. Let's go straight in then. <clears throat> we'll go into this and we'll do Q and A after TV and home theater. Okay. Okay. Okay, and <clears throat> now CES is usually a pretty big show for TVs, and I, I, I think after going to it for over 10 years, I can see why, right? Like, <laughs> you need a lot of space to show off big screens, and it seems like every TV company has just, like, gotten into the habit of bringing all their new toys. So we've got a bunch of new stuff, uh, pretty much the usual. It's like LG has unveiled a bunch of new OLEDs. Um, one thing that's really struck my eye, though, is uh, LG's 97-inch M3 TV, which is an OLED, and it can wirelessly receive 4K 120 hertz video. So we have a picture of that. I don't, yeah, we didn't do video coverage of this, but this is on like a uh, giant easel legs. It is a huge screen. And just the idea of doing wireless reception, uh, it's using zero connect wireless video. This is the first TV to use that technology. Um, but basically you plug your stuff into an external box, like some of Samsung's TVs now, and that wirelessly shoots the video over to the TV. Good idea or bad idea, Matt? Like, what do you what do you think of this concept? I love when these TV concepts kind of strip away the unnecessary cables and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Samsung's been doing it with its frame series for yeah. uh, I, I don't know, five years or so now. Uh, and honestly, all of Samsung's TVs have like a single cable that connects yeah. to the TV, and then there's a little box that has they power oddly are the, and all the inputs. Yeah, and they're the only one that seems to be doing that when it seems mm -hmm. like such a smart solution. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I like I like it. Um, of course, it's a classic CES conundrum where we don't see. You know, we don't have someone playing Xbox on this to see what the latency is like. You know, how does it, you know, I understand it will broadcast it, but that seems like it's a bit yeah. of a mystery box in that yeah. way. How yeah. does that yeah. work? Um, will there there work is broadcasting and then there is, uh, if you're a gamer, then you're worried about latency and that's where milliseconds mm -hmm. matter. Um, and is there, let's see, LG is not talking about the technology. I haven't looked fully into Zero Connect as well, but 
it does seem like something that is maybe maybe that's not the problem to solve maybe so for some users it is but i do feel like just give me a breakout box like the breakout box can be near the tv but just like separate those connections and the tv like give me a single cable samsung is doing it right i don't know if they've patented that design um this feels i don't know innovation for the sake of innovation almost yeah i mean to lg's credit at least they aren't coming with wirelessly streaming 1080p at 60 hertz yeah. or some other yeah. Yeah. segment up to this maximum we're seeing here and this is what you want to see because mm -hmm. if you're buying this kind of giant oled that costs thousands upon thousands of dollars mm -hmm. it's got to last it's got to you know keep on that bleeding edge for at least a couple of years yeah i just um, don't want to think about my reception for my 4k yeah. OLED. like i don't want to worry yeah. about that personally so I'm somebody, I like wires. I don't think wires are bad. You just gotta kind of hide them and take care of them. Uh, but I went to great lengths to like string ethernet to my office here, you know, <laughs> so in my basement. So I did that for a reason. So we can do the show without worrying about wireless reception and things like that. I can And like imagine, any kind yeah. of, any kind of excuses or accommodations, like, well, you'd plug in your high end mm -hmm. Blu-ray player into the box. I'm mm -hmm. like, surely if you have this expensive a TV, you want it to play everything you already own and use every service available to you without you having to Mm -hmm. make a workaround to get the best possible quality out of it for sure so for yeah, sure. It, yeah it, it's another problem in the chain yeah. of many problems that can happen in your tv also if you ever use bluetooth like headphones with your tv while yeah. you're watching stuff syncing that up is already a problem i can't imagine dealing with both the wireless video delay and also the delay of bluetooth you know don't cry <laughs> Devin, huh? it sounds like you're gonna <laughs> cry about yes, you yeah know. Yep, yeah, yep. no, uh, take a little bit of water and mm -hmm. uh, do that last sentence or so again. Mm -hmm. I think the main problem here is that it's just adding another, you know, layer of a problem. So when you connect Bluetooth uh, headphones to your TV, you're already dealing yeah. with wireless delay there. Now you're going to be dealing with two different delays and getting those delays in sync. And man, I don't, yeah. th that just sounds like a headache to me, even with the Apple TV, which makes, um, Bluetooth super easy, even with the AirPods Pro. There, there's sometimes weird delays, and I just can't figure it out, and it's super, super frustrating. Um, kind of along this line, let's talk about weird OLEDs, right? So we also <laughs> covered Sherlin covered the Displace 55-inch OLED TV, which sticks onto any yep. wall or window. Vacuum seals. Uh -huh. So yeah, it's got like active vacuum sealing, like you know, motors and suckers and stuff. Mm -hmm. So apparently, once it detects the surface, it'll start the, that sit that process going and you kind of hold it to the surface it's like it a gecko that's just like oh wall 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 i'm gonna it's, I'm gonna stick it's to a this. gecko that can stream footage of other geckos mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's also i believe it's also battery powered too yeah like battery, powered. battery so powered so it doesn't have cables or ports on it at all it takes yeah a handful of batteries so, so like with the batteries in it apparently it'll last at least six hours of content streaming and again it speaks uh -huh. to your point earlier this is wireless as well so this is broadcasting in some way this is just i look at this thing and i'm like technology. i just see problems i just oh see... for sure but oh, it's so man. cool too it, it is so cool i mean it's like oh so what happens if your active um vacuuming technology fails or reason? you get you get a little bit drunk or a bit sleepy fall asleep those six mm -hmm. hours of battery run out and then the suction powers <laughs> yeah know, what happens what happens i assume it still stays suction but say you leave and go on vacation for a month or something and you forget about oh no i forgot to not just like <laughs> unsucker my tv i forgot to unsucker my tv and store it away properly <laughs> as everyone should um i yeah, don't totally. know i don't know about this one it's certainly a wild idea we have video of this too so um go go check that out but i just look at this like if I was there, I would just be like asking these guys questions. I'm like, okay, so uh, what problem are you solving here? Mounting TVs is hard. Mounting yeah. TVs is hard. That's a problem. Um, sure. there it has handles that. too. Let's not forget. It, does it have has handles. handles. It does look like it can easy, like it's easy for one. They say it's under 20 pounds. So it seems yeah. like it's easy for a person to do. Um, there's a pop up 4K camera, um, which can do video calls and all sorts of stuff too uh it's gonna be doesn't free. come with a remote which i think is annoying so i never use <clears> gesture <throat> controls ever and i don't know just to control. use gesture please. controls please so yeah it doesn't come with a remote so you have to use gesture controls and it's uh currently three thousand dollars and they're making 100 units available yeah. for pre-order three thousand dollars for three thousand dollars you can get um actually more than a 65 inch oled i believe you can get up to 75 inches like if you put if you use your money correctly so I just look at this and I'm like, oh, this is a really cool CES idea. Um, I don't know what you guys are thinking. I don't know. 
I, I just don't know. Like as a consumer, I'm like, you, you know, you can buy TV stands. You know, you could buy a stand <laughs> that you just like mount the TV on and this has wheels and you could just move it around places and plug it into the wall. And like you kind of avoid <laughs> a lot of these uh, issues. Um, so, okay. Displace TV. Check out our video. It's such yeah. an, it's such a CES thing though. That's, that's like about it. That it's just scream CES, giant mm -hmm. TV crazy use cases let's yeah. just make it and see i see people you know in the chat are pointing out like yeah mounting tvs is hard that is true mounting tvs is hard there are other ways around it there are other <laughs> ways around mounting too like honestly if you don't want to mount stuff into your walls or if you're in an apartment or something um look at those tv stands like look at a rolling tv stand because that actually that that would let you like roll a tv into your bedroom from your living room or something like that and uh, it is a lot easier to deal with than mounting stuff to your wall I've never mounted any TVs that I've had, so Ooh, I've, I've just lived with console tables. Um, oh, right. Yeah. I thought you said, I got, I got the help to do it for me. No, 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 no. no. no, no. <laughs> I mean, I've seen the ideas, but I also, uh, at least for the past 10 years, was living in New York apartments where we couldn't do that. Right. Even now, I'm like, well, I have a house. I could just mount this family room TV so it's like less trouble for the kids. And it's like, I don't. It's too much trouble. I'm very lazy, guys. I feel like laziness is the ultimate deciding factor for a lot of these <laughs> things um in terms of more tv stuff uh samsung has a whole new lineup as well i think what's most interesting is that they are betting a little more on micro leds um this is similar to that was the technology they introduced in the wall in 2018 and basically it's leds but kind of shrunk down to the side of like oled pixels they're also self-emissive so they don't need backlights and uh, that technology is also scalable too. So the wall was this thing where you could buy a whole bunch of panels, not you specifically, because that thing costs a shit ton of money. So just like, <laughs> it, it, was, it was a little crazy. Uh, it could, I think at, at a minimum, it was 150 inches. Um, but basically you could kind of combine different ones to be different um, different sizes, like no matter what you wanted. So for some companies, maybe maybe companies with a lot of money, like that was a really convenient thing. Now they're going to be a whole bunch of micro LED sets uh, ranging from, 50 let me see here 50 to 140 inch micro led models we don't have pricing yet um no company gives us pricing during cs it's a weird thing uh, I think. mostly out of spite i think mm -hmm. yeah just to make life really annoying for us but uh pricing actually tends to come in the spring maybe after they know how much uh, the supplies would cost and like uh, there are like a lot of factors kind of going into it so i would expect these to be a, a great deal more than a typical oled or even lcd panel from uh from samsung are you intrigued though, Matt? Like, have you seen the wall? Have you seen the, the micro LED stuff? I've seen, I've seen the wall. I, it gets to this point where the technology, like a lot of the benefits here seem so similar to OLED that I feel like I need a physics degree to pick between them. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> the wall was super impressive, but I think half of the impressiveness was the fact it was just huge. And the idea mm -hmm. that it was almost like Lego style, mm -hmm. you can make as big a screen as you want by joining them all together. It was, it, but was, saying, it was a great concept, yeah. Yeah, like they're saying that these these are uh, the new micro LED line, like it'll hit like 240 variable refresh rates, mm -hmm. two nanosecond response times. Right like, for gamers, it yeah. It sounds super impressive. Mm -hmm. And they're mm -hmm. still, they are making OLEDs as well, aren't they, Samsung? They are making OLEDs. Like it actually took them a while. I think it wasn't until last year when Samsung started making OLEDs and also they were the ones who introduced the new QD OLED technology oh, with gosh, quantum yeah. dots and that actually like that's some decent competition with uh with um that's some decent competition with lg and lg for the longest time has been making oled panels with a uh, you know that everybody has been using yeah. um there are so many choices i don't think a typical consumer if you're listening to the show you're not gonna be buying um a micro led tv so don't don't worry about it you may be buying a mini led tv which is the other the other version yes. of that technology which so those are LED sets with like thousands, hundreds to thousands of backlights. So just like it's brighter than a typical LED and backlighting is kind of the thing yeah. that kind of has differentiated uh, OLEDs and LCDs. Since OLEDs don't need backlights and since the pixels light themselves up, they can get to pure black and mini LEDs kind of get almost there. So I actually have a mini LED TV. I have the TCL series eight from a couple of years ago in my family room and that thing looks great. Like I, I think I occasionally run into issues where I'm like, yeah, this is not as uniform as an OLED would be, or the blacks aren't as pure, but I'm mostly watching like kids shows and you know, kids movies on that. So it's like less of a concern for me. Um, I think for general consumers, mini LED is kind of the thing. We're also seeing that in a lot of monitors and stuff now, and it's coming to laptops. So 
you know, that's the thing to look out for. Um, the Samsung QN900C is their 8K Quantum Mini LED panel. That thing can reach up to 4,000 nits of brightness, which is, it's like staring at the surface of the sun. That is just yeah. really bright. Oh, my God. <laughs> Seems like a a, a, f- a phone camera fa- flash level of yeah, brightness. Yeah, just like uh, just stare at this. Have you done a TV upgrade yet, Matt? I am on a LC, uh, LG OLED. I want to say C series, perhaps mm-hmm. um, the one that does variable refresh rates. So that might be a bit fancier than that, even. Yeah, no, but like- it's great. Um, yeah, absolutely fantastic. I wall mounted it just to add to the argument, but I was too afraid to do it myself as a 37 year old and got my dad to help. Oh, you need two Um, people. You need two people for it. Yeah, it's kind of terrifying when I've had to take it off to kind of either mount my sound bar or like Mm -hmm. do with other stuff, get rid of my Chromecast or whatever it is. And every time I have to lift it off that bracket, I am Uh, terrified. And is that a 55 inch or 65 inch? I think it's 65 so yeah mm-hmm. terrifying mm-hmm. that is my wingspan at that point it's scary know? i mean i have the giant uh samsung 55 inch uh odyssey g9 monitor oh here, yeah which yeah. i reviewed and this thing basically all together weighs close to 100 pounds like you need two people to like get the massive screen it's, onto it's not the, the weight itself it's, like, not, it's it's not the weight itself is it yeah. it's just how unwieldy it is it's mm-hmm. Your, your fingertips are at their limits to carry mm-hmm. these things and so you have no strength to lift it or place it with any kind of yeah accuracy it's hey, folks if you're buying tvs uh it's usually worth paying a little more to get the installation help like that's just yeah. i'm just putting that out there um to get the installation help because they will also do that and like take away the boxes and stuff and that's been super super helpful i think we've been so enamored with the ideas i could mount this to my wall look look what i can do with this you don't have to mount it to your wall you don't have to mount a tv above your py- fireplace for the love of god stop doing that i every time i see a tv there that is like 10 feet off the ground and you're sitting on the couch and you're just like your neck is craned all the way up that's not that's not a way to watch anything come on folks <laughs> um has anything else uh, caught your eye at ces when it comes to tv stuff matt tvs uh one thing i did want to know actually like mm-hmm. i was saying i i own a uh, relatively recent uh lg oled and something that lg has kind of announced is uh that their tvs will better sync with L- lg's new branded mm-hmm. soundbars i guess mm-hmm. that's technically theater home theater but yeah I'm hoping that they will have backward combat compatibility with my TV mostly. No, I don't care about anyone mm-hmm. else's. Uh, <laughs> but this is the kind of thing we, we won't get the nitty gritty until the mm-hmm. spring when we hear pricing and availability. Because you're looking, you want to have like a seamless uh, audio setup with your TV. Yeah, like I like idea. the mm-hmm. notion. So the idea is apparently these new, cut, you know, these new top end LG soundbars. They'll they have a new feature which is mimicking what Samsung has announced that uses the built in TV speakers in addition to the soundbar and kind of synchronizes yeah. and uses them together for a richer. I don't... Sound I, stage. I don't know about that. I don't know about like I, I've seen that is a good idea. Like, hey, I have these other speakers. I can use them. The thing about sound is that you want things to be kind of uniform, you yeah. know. So if you have like little tinny speakers uh, trying to work alongside a sound bar that has like big beefy drivers, I, I don't know if you're actually gaining anything. Um, it is cool to see these companies kind of like playing with this idea. Most people will just get like get, get one of the Sonos's or something. Um, and every TV maker is kind of doing a sound bar that matches their TV. So that's like an idea as well. That's kind of like what you're referring to here. Um, a couple of companies, they're talking about soundbars that just like clip onto the bottom of newer TVs or will like will mount effectively. And that is, that is kind of a smart thing because for people, especially who've already mounted their TVs onto the wall, mm. being able to like just throw something else on there without worrying about anything else, like without worrying about screwing back anything else in, I think is kind of, that's pretty cool. Samsung also showed off a couple other things. Um, their freestyle projector which was their really cool cute looking portable projector from last year there is going to be a new version and uh, you'll be able to take two units and combine them into a super huge image which is kind of intriguing it's not it's not gonna be like a single 16 by 9 image it could be either 21 by 9 or it could be like the super tall um what's the super tall equivalent uh 16 by 15. So if you mm-hmm. have like a thing on top of each other, so you could use these things to like watch two separate things at once. That's kind of cool. Um, and there are some games that run actually in 21 by nine. I don't know how they'll sync up with a portable tr- projector like this, but it's a cool concept. Um, we didn't get to review the freestyle, I believe, but from the reviews I saw last year, it seemed a little, it seemed like it didn't quite live up to the expectations people had for it. Samsung is doing some cool stuff. They are doing like auto leveling and auto keystone correction 
And if you ever mess with uh, projectors, that's like the most annoying thing. That is like the annoying thing is trying to make sure your corners are square and everything like looks in proportion. So if they're getting better at that, if this is a better projector, um, this could be kind of cool. You know, are you intrigued by this, Matt? I am. Like I, I did kind of reach out to Samsung this side about mm-hmm. it because I was intrigued in getting one because it seems like a good entry level device for projectors. Um, and what I did like is, I, if I recall, the original could be installed into a light fitting so you could have it mm-hmm. effortlessly hanging and powered from yeah. a light fitting and uh, yeah just wirelessly do everything to that and That's that, a cool that, idea. you mm-hmm. know again it's a smart idea but like you're saying a lot of these it's like and yeah it's it's telling that there weren't that many reviews and mm-hmm. that Samsung it, it didn't seemed like a get little hard to, to get you with a rush yeah exactly the original yeah. one uh, was $900 too which is yeah more expensive than i assume for a portable projector um I think if you're buying a 1080p projector, typically you'll find one between like probably like 700 to 800 bucks. So it's actually in that range. Um, it just didn't seem like the software was there. This year, they're also adding the gaming hub, Samsung's gaming hub, which adds Xbox Cloud Gaming built in, Amazon Luna, NVIDIA GeForce Now. So that's like another thing you could do with this. I could see some people wanting this like in their bedroom or just like ha- wanting a thing that you could like bring to your backyard or something or yeah. project on your your apartment wall i'm not sure the two freestyles is that compelling uh, an upgrade from the last Mm -hmm. one but um yeah we'll see at least they're at least they're doing something different another thing i want to shout out real quick is roku is uh building their own tvs finally and that is pretty interesting because um there have been roku tvs for a while since 2014 but they've all been built by partners so partners like hisense and tcl this year for the first time roku's like okay we're just gonna do it ourselves and they're gonna build their own um pricing between 119 and 999 um and sets ranging from 24 to 75 inches so decent pricing decent budget um you know territory for this stuff roku's not talking about many of the specs like some will be hd some will be 4k they're not talking about like deeper specs beyond that but uh it it is interesting to see them just like take control their own destiny a bit um they said from my conversations with roku they're not trying to directly compete with their partners this is like a microsoft thing like when microsoft started making laptops Uh, but they did want to be able to like include all the stuff they wanted to in a budget tv that some partners are not doing so all of these will have voice remotes um and tcl and others like have not been including those on the cheaper roku tv so that's kind of like the deal there any thoughts on this matt like are you intrigued does it just make sense strategically for roku yeah i mean yeah it was odd that they were calling these things roku tvs mm-hmm. when they weren't roku tvs before so yeah. it just it was the roku <laughs> tv that... platform basically yeah. yeah yeah so um yeah I, I, i'm not really i haven't got much to say it just is mm-hmm. the thing they should have done right from the outset, I think. I mean, that, that would have been hard, right? They weren't, um, Roku is a hardware company, was was kind of just making little streaming boxes, right? They weren't making yeah. TVs. But I think the innovation of the Roku TV program was just like, hey, TCL, you're really good at making TVs. Here, take our software <laughs> and just like make a good thing. And gen- generally, I think they've turned out pretty well. That TCL Series 8 I have is Roku TV. Um, the software is pretty, like, pretty decent, certainly better and more stable, I'd say, than a typical TV OS. So I do appreciate that. Um, but yeah, this is just a nice step forward for Roku. Another thing around Roku is they announced an OLED Roku TV design for their partners. So partners will finally be able to make an OLED Roku TV. Maybe we'll see it this year. There's really no other details. Like they make this thing and then partners look at it and they're like, okay, we can build one of those. And then maybe four or five months later, like they announce that they'll actually do something. So maybe this holiday season, we'll actually see some OLED Roku TVs I want more OLEDs everywhere, so this is a great idea. Sure, bring bring more OLEDs on the things. And we could cut it here, I think. <clears throat> yeah, right. okay. Let's do some Q&A time. I'm going to run to the yes. bathroom real quick, but you guys chat with... I am going to put some lights on, but I will be seconds. Okay, okay. I'll wait for you, Matt. Uh, hello, chat room. I see you guys getting heated in the conversation here. And certainly, um, yeah, mounting TVs. Terrifying! I want to. I want to be a little. I, there are so many things to be anxious about in life. You know, like one thing I don't want to be anxious about is will my TV, will my two thousand dollar TV fall, because I'm not good enough at finding studs or you know and selling things properly. So, the only way you get peace of mind is to pay to have it, quote unquote, professionally installed or like hire a task rabbit or something. Finding um, studs has never been a problem for me. 
Wow. Uh, wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, lots see. of mounting going on there, Matt. Ayo, All I need to do is look in the mirror. Ayo. Ayo. How many inches is that? Ayo, ayo. Ayo. <laughs> um, you know what? Like, this is why I'm just like TV stands. TV stands are great. You just you put it on a table. And nothing I, you don't have to worry about it. Are you yeah. not like does, can the toddlers not reach it? Like you have two toddling toddlers almost now. Don't, can they They can't take it? so we have a big we, we have like a thing that's like four feet off the ground, like a TV stand and like it's a giant screen. So my daughter is four years old. She's like, I'm not gonna touch that. Like <laughs> she she may try to put her fingerprints on it, but she won't try to yank it off. And okay. the baby is just starting to crawl around. So he's like, you know, we try not to have the TV okay. on too much with him. For a kids thing, I think the a good safety thing for kids is to mount a TV like up and away or at least get the cables away. But you totally don't need to like you don't need to mount. You there's so many other things you could do. You could buy a TV stand that has like a little back arm, you know, that you mount onto the TV onto that. Um, there's a lot of other options, folks. Buddy305 Love says he mounted all the TVs in his house and good for you. That's what I say. <laughs> Thank you. You know, what that's a, a that's what a, a flex. hardy that's a hardy guy who lives in Florida. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. um if you if you got the flex, if you have the like handy man wherewithal enough to do that too. Handy like, man wherewithal. You, Good, sure, yeah. <laughs> Every oh, day good. I slip more and more into just embracing my um, birthright as a fifth generation New Yorker mm -hmm. and just like, I'm a effete East Coast liberal. I'll, yeah. I'll pay someone else to do it. Do you, do you, I, I mean, it yeah. cracks me up. When I talk to like my American coworkers and like, cause this is a, this is a relatively new apartment uh -huh, and uh -huh. I painted one of the walls. And they're like, you Yay. painted that yourself? They're like, <gasps> oh. Well, painting. Okay. Well, no, yeah. no, but that—that's yeah. just bullshit. That's people who, like <laughs> actually wanted to be wanting to be waited on hand and mm -hmm, foot mm -hmm. by, like all the serfs that you can get in yeah. a place like New York City or London. Painting um, is annoying, though. It is I think annoying. that when yeah. people say like, "Oh, you painted your wall," mm -hmm. it's because you own your place, right, Matt? Mm -hmm. So, like, it's Kinda. it's not a rental. <laughs> it's a, how does that work there? Yeah. Uh, that's it, what I'm, no, I'm saying. It's a very complicated situation. It has and it's probably helped contribute to the house price rise but it's uh, a shared ownership where half's a mortgage half's rented uh, and i can eventually scale up and buy the whole thing that's right at the moment as you might have heard uh, the uk is a dumpster fire and all the mortgage rates have kind of gone through the roof so we're, we're all we're all a dumpster fire it's okay we're, we're all yeah yeah, yeah, no, we're, yeah we're all in that same boat yeah, i was hoping but, to fully own my dumpster fire but that's uh, not going to be possible this year i think the thing I, about painting your new york apartment too you can do it but the rule is you have to paint it back when i've heard it. that yeah yeah, like, yeah so that's that just seems hard I don't yeah, want to yeah, do that. I, I think that it's not so much like oh i can't believe that like mm -hmm. you uh painted it yourself as in like like you actually moved the brush up and down. It's mm -hmm. like, I can't believe you did that because you're just going to have to, you're just going to have to do it, it again. Right. And people yeah, don't stay possibly. in their apartments that long. Like yeah, most people some, are sometime between often. like nine and 12 months or something. <laughs> I know people who like it would move basically once a year. So yeah, yeah totally true. Yeah. I'm going to run to the bathroom. I will be right back. Good luck chat. I'll be right back. Yeah. Uh, skilled buyer says, yeah, I mounted my TV in the year after I moved. No mounting anymore. Yeah. Fair enough. That is totally fair. Buddy three hundred five love says last one I mounted was an eighty three inch. Damn, oh, by a condio, dude. Size king or size queen. size king. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, I want to go back into the chat because I saw uh, D Man uh, say something about that. They hope that they're like he hopes that uh, they're going to see like new things from um gigabyte and i was like hmm that's interesting i haven't heard of that pc components company oh it's, a, it's so, an old one yeah gigabyte i yeah. i type it into google i go g i g a and the first thing that comes up i shit you not is giga chad before gigabyte <laughs> What's a giga chat? What, a, what does it do? Uh, oh goodness. Um that is like the most manly possible man. From... Oh, the chin guy, yeah. Yes, 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 the chin guy, the chin guy. Um but yeah, I'm I'm surprised that that came up before like the actual unit of data storage, but that's just the world we live in now. <laughs> so okay, yeah, now now we've just got a bunch of people making uh innuendo with their TV sizes in the chat. You should so, be ashamed thank, of yourselves. Whoever yeah, thank you for doing thing. that and please keep it coming. I don't know if we're going to read all of them because <laughs> uh but one of the things that makes me most nervous, I think you mentioned it uh during the segment was not only 
like putting up the bracket for your TV, but then there are some of those TV brackets that kind of pop out and cantilever. And that is the true test of whether or not you actually fixed it to your wall well, because you're putting it away from the initial bracket and it could just fall. Yeah, just like the physics of leverage and just having yep, more yep, weight yep, yep. the further away. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is traumatic. But that's why I have my dad there because like, he knows what he's doing. Good he job, Matt's kind dad. Of things. Yeah, but now have I finally drilled into my wall without supervision? I think I have, but I'm still petrified. So do they have like stud construction or do they have yeah, uh, but plaster this is a, walls? Yeah, we have stud oh, we have yeah, like you stud said... walls, plaster, brick. This is a this is a grade two listed building, so I'm kind of fancy. Mm -hmm. But because it's a new build in the grade two listed building, the wall mm -hmm. has a kind of metal mesh in a lot of places. So using mm -hmm. a stud detector to find the studs is very erratic. And mm -hmm. so I'm constant fit const in living in constant fear that I'm gonna electrocute myself despite all my best efforts. Well, yeah, and then like those mounting, there are those mounting options that like will go into the wall and then you like twist the- Oh yeah, like the butterflies. Uh, the yeah, butterfly yeah, yeah, like a butterfly system. thing and then yeah. it'll come out and it could even like lock into the mesh. I'm looking at hmm. my own screen on the uh, YouTube <laughs> chat, but so it, it'll think, it'll go like that. If you're I think the Home Alone window. movies <laughs> just, yeah, the Home Alone movies just make me extra anxious about all these things, I feel like. I'm just one step away from electrocuting myself or a wall falling on me or all other kinds of shenanigans. Walking around for most of the movie with a ironing board or, or ironing iron uh, burn on your face. Yeah, classic me. Classic Matt. <laughs> Dude named Charlie says he mounted his 85-inch TV. So it's like, yeah, yeah. As they get bigger, sure, mounting <laughs> makes more sense. Sure. Okay, but like, where do you live that an 85-inch TV makes sense? You know... Not apartments, not New York City apartments. So I know people who have 75 inch TVs and they have like townhouses and Do you not live even like in a, a movie theater. Room, basically, <laughs> basically. And then like you could get an 85 inch TV. You really don't need a projector, you know, like that's pretty, pretty darn big. Um, okay. We've got a bunch of things to go through and Chris is going to join us at noonish. Let me just double check on her. Buddy305 okay. Love says that they recommend the Wallabot uh diy stud finder not sure if that's available in the uk um googling it i have a fancy one but uh, stud finder the problem is I, it finds studs everywhere well yeah i think the problem is actually that the construction of your walls it's not so much the tool mm -hmm. that you're using to find the studs okay. i'm just gonna put the sony car because people have been mentioning it but i will the sony honda mobility oh car just put that in mobile because it, it moves the is Wallabot that... Stud Finder is $170. No, thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> or is this a review I need to do? Yeah. Uh, what else do we... Oh, I mean, most of it, honestly, was talking... Of, like, most of chat in the last half hour or mm -hmm. so is mostly talking about mounting TVs. It's a, it's a problem. Is... So that's why the company was like... I know the solution, active vacuuming. Okay, but I was oh, saying man. like the, the thing about active vacuuming, mm -hmm. like did it say, when I hear active vacuuming, I'm thinking that it's attached to a microcontroller that's actively like monitoring the they amount say, of pressure um, that's suctioning in, it to in the wall. piece, she says it checks several times a day to like check okay. the suction basically. So yeah. it won't yeah, just I... fall when it loses battery, but it will not be checking, you know, so. I'd want it to check like every 15 minutes, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Again, um, another layer of anxiety. Do not need. Do not need in our lives. So, yeah. Also, like that leads to the one of the weird things that I think about a lot, which is like the sounds that just passively happen in mm -hmm. your house if it's dead, dead quiet. Mm -hmm. You're just like hanging out on the couch, like reading a book or something, not listening to music, not doing anything. And like every quarter of an hour, you might hear like something from the general area of your TV going like, like basically readjusting or like taking on more air to like feed more mm -hmm. pressure in. Not everything. The yeah, we do. We don't thing. need more tech and more gadgetry in everything. Like just holding up a big screen. Give me, give me a, st a stable, stable legs or give me, you know, give me an actual mount, not a vacuum seal. 
All right, let's let's keep moving because we got to bring Chris in in half an hour. <clears throat> yes. Okay. So we're going to go straight to like other news and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Well, no, okay. we're going to go to mobile and accessibility. Oh, okay. I thought we're just we're going okay, down the line. We're okay, going. That's down the what line. I thought that we were yep. going to wait for Carissa for. No, no, we're we're okay. doing Chris's section after. Okay. So let's do okay. as much of the show as we can, and we yeah. will. No, nope. okay. Thing. Let's go in on it. <clears throat> I mean, mobile is going to be quick. Mobile is going to be pretty quick. <clears throat> Let's move on to some mobile news at CES. And you know what? It's never that much of a mobile show because Mobile World Congress is typically happening when February or March, like yeah. not that long after. Um, are you are you planning to do Mobile World Congress this year, Matt? Uh, we're hearing murmurs of bits and pieces, so mm -hmm. it might be like a, a, skeletal, a skeletal crew. Um, okay. There's going to be a few devices. Um, perhaps, yeah, CES perhaps the best gadget house. show. It's Mobile World Congress because it's in Barcelona. and That does help. Yeah, It does sure. help quite a bit. Like the, the show where uh, it's great to be in a place you don't actively hate, like going to Vegas <laughs> for CES. So that's a big, that's a big step up. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's going to be happening. But Samsung did reveal the Galaxy A14 5G, which is 200 bucks. Two hundred dollars, and it has a better selfie camera than um, I guess the previous model, than last year's A13 5G. It looks really simple, but it has three cameras on the back. It looks like it actually looks a bit iPhoney, to be honest. Like yeah, I've not seen does, these A13s. Yeah. I haven't seen these A phones for a while from Samsung, but it has a decent looking screen. It does have a chunky bezel around it. It does look like a phone where, yeah, you're you're paying two hundred bucks, you actually get some decent tech in here. I don't know. Have you played with the cheaper Samsung phones, Matt? Yeah, like so. I've doubled with the. It's a very weird way to word it, but their mid range is A series. So I've mm -hmm. often played with their high end mid range. So the A fifty three, I think we're on now fifty four, maybe. Um, yeah, so that they're pretty decent. You can tell they're not quite as polished as the premium mm -hmm. S series, um, but they they got that reliable Samsung bent to them so they, they just yeah, work like, that it has you know, a 90 hertz screen yeah. the iphone 13 and 14 do not have 90 hertz like yeah they don't have screens beyond 60 hertz so that's something i mean the fact that it comes with like a 5000 milliamp battery as well mm -hmm. which is great for something that's probably not gonna take that much energy to run <laughs> um and it's got a, it's got a mediatek chip and so it has again, a 50 megapixel thing. rear camera too as well as uh two macro two two megapixel a lot of these like the very entry cameras. level a ones often do have like a, a you know a, a mm. huge <clears throat> megapixel camera somewhere in that array of three um but yeah like this is this you know this is samsung's way of tricking someone into buying a cheap samsung phone basically and they're yeah. assuming they're getting an s phone but then i don't know i don't know how things are in the uk map but in the us like these phones end up just being you get you get it for free right you don't pay anything yeah and you end up it's either bundled into your plan or something like over time so you don't even really you may not even feel the hit of this phone but anyway the a14 5g looks pretty cool and also in samsung news they unveiled this really cool um, wow, prototype Prototype Flex Hybrid OLED mobile display. It can both slide out and it can fold yep. over. So it can go basically uh, basically from a phone size to, it goes from a 10.5 inch four, four, uh, four to three screen to a wide 12.4 inch 16 by 10 screen. So and then it is... folds into a clam. So yeah, there's then like three functions. So it can fold up to like a 4.2 inch compact, uh -huh. but no screen on the outside and then unfurl into the weird four by three ratio and then the kind of widescreen 16 mm -hmm. by 10. You know what? Yes. We're still waiting for the, uh, was it the Surface Neo from Microsoft, which was supposed oh, to be yeah. their like dual screen thing. And like, well, Samsung is out here. We've got folding screens. We've got, you know, uh, why we've got sliding screens and Microsoft can't get a freak, a freaking two screen, screen device out there. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm still, I can't quite see from this, co these concept images where it goes when it mm -hmm. slides. Cause normally it kind of where rolls does it go? in. Where does it yeah. go? Like, you where see does what screen I mean? go? I don't know. Where, where, where screen go? <laughs> Tell me where screen go. Um, let me see here. The extra two inches of screen rolls from under the right hand side of the device when slid out, judging by the extra thickness of that side of the display. So yeah, it does look a little chunkier. Yeah, but yeah, that doesn't it even look like, like it space. would roll into that, does it? It looks yeah. but it has to go somewhere. Um so we did note that Xiaomi showed off a similar it's actually, concept a while ago, yeah. It was a TCL. It was TCL? Yeah. Let me see let here. Me, oh yeah, yeah. I'm TCL. Gonna... I'm okay. going to correct okay. that post. Right we're going to, yeah, we're going to correct that. <laughs> um, but TCL, I do remember this. I do remember Chris Velasco yeah. going and looking at the folding, sliding thing from TCL. I feel like every, every one of these things you add to screen makes me also be like, this is how I feel about the sectioning TV. I'm like, 
that's just multiple levels of anxiety. That is like an inception pool of going deep into, will the sliding function break? Will the folding mm. function break? I don't, I don't know. It's a cool concept though. And, cool. But the thing is also Samsung can make it a reality. Mm -hmm. Like you're going to see a Galaxy Z slide <sighs> of some kind, you know, it's, yeah. It's just I, I, I do feel like it, that, that to me also adds so much more friction to using a phone, right? Like the thing about smartphones that are right now, you, you hit a button and you either fingerprint sign or I, I scan and there, boom, all screen. A folding phone, you kind of have to fumble like the old cell phones and kind of open a bit. And then you have to wait for the, for the screen to slide out to you. I don't know. I don't know how that whole process is going to work. Um, but it's a, it's certainly a cool concept. Like I would love I mean, to see. I mean, it could be a tablet. tablet. Yeah. yeah, it probably is a tablet, not a mm -hmm. phone. That's the oh, thing. So this is definitely a tablet. Like just looking yeah. from the size of it. But again, I don't just I just let it fold. Let it fold. That's all it let needs it to fold. do. It doesn't need to slide. Just let it fold. Like give me that ten and a half inch screen or so. Fold that into something smaller. I don't need to go all the way to twelve point four. I think. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, cool concept. One thing we also want to mention, which is sort of mobile, because uh, mobile is in the name, Sony Honda Mobility. The joint venture between Sony and Honda to make EVs. They showed off their first EV concept at CES, and um, it's called Afila. Afila, Matt, how do you feel about that? There's there's some meaning that I'm not getting from it, surely, right? Mm. Is it like I a, don't, a god, like a Greek goddess or something? I, I have no clue. I don't know what they're going for, but it does sound like sometimes when two Japanese companies get together and they're already very bad at branding, um, they, they come up with a, a mutant that is the worst, one of the worst things. I don't, I'm just, I'm just thinking of jokes when I hear a fila. So, okay. Um, I actually, so this is the vision uh s02 concept from sony basically um i sat in the sony concept a couple of years ago when we last went to ces and uh it was wild it was wild to see sony actually produce a car but mainly it existed because of the the entertainment stuff did you get to see that matt yeah, yeah yeah so i think um i was sat at the sony press conference recently mm -hmm. just like and the car's here and the car. yeah i was like oh my god here it is yeah so if i mean you sat in it it feels like a car it was very it bizarre like back then but and also, without honda at that yeah point. i'm i'm also somebody who's like kind of dabbling more into cars because i'm living the suburban life and i've been researching things um will i'll eventually be moving to an ev and it does feel like Santa sony has a very good idea of what to do for an entertainment side of things i don't know about building a car so that's why they teamed up with honda to do this but also i don't trust honda that much anymore too when it comes to electric concepts um both honda and toyota have been very slow when it when it's come to evs and they've been blown away by tesla and by rivian and by a lot of other companies so okay well we'll, we'll see how this goes it looks really nice and i'm sure the interior is going to be super super interesting like to me the ev i'm really looking at right now is that new uh, the Volvo XE90 that we talked about several months ago, and I, I have a Volvo now. I love the Volvo idea. I love their like safety record and everything. So that's kind of where I am. But yeah, this is the Sony Honda Mobility e a Afila. Afila, do you feel it? I've just been trying to research what that means, and uh -huh. it said it's an <laughs> Islamic name for a girl, and its mm. meaning is TBC. So. TBC. <laughs> it means not even the internet knows we don't we don't know um yeah. okay there was some accessibility news at cs as well and it is nice to see like the show being more of a highlight for that so l'oreal did uh they showed off a motorized lipstick applicator for people with limited mobility and this looks really cool it's kind of like a wand that you can hold um to to apply lipstick and they also have a makeup applicator which seems like something straight out of like the jetsons you know like um it is the L'Oreal Brow Magic uh, that can give you a personalized eyebrow look based on your facial features and natural brow. I don't know how that works. I don't know how a lot of eyebrow things works. Like eyebrow threading <laughs> is a very weird concept. Uh, my wife also does that quite a bit too. I'm like, okay, I, I, I see why we're doing it. Uh, the how of it is very confusing to me, but that's because I'm, I'm just a dude who gets haircuts rarely. Um, Sony also showed off their Project Leonardo controller kit, their accessibility controller, which is going to be like their version of what Microsoft did with their accessibility controller. Thoughts on this, Matt? Because I know you're, you're a big Sony guy. You love the yeah. Sony. Yeah, I mm -hmm. love the Sony. So, I mean, even without the accessibility, this just looks like really cool controllers because mm -hmm. it looks completely different. It looks like some kind of VR controller more than anything. Um, <laughs> it like, looks... 
it looks like a David Cronenberg project. Actually, yeah. I feel like he yeah. went full yeah. sci-fi. I just rewatched. I just watched Crimes of the Future for the first time, and it uses this <laughs> weird like organic thing you hit and it controls surgical equipment i'm getting sort of that feel here but it looks cool it has like the same style as the dual um, sense right you know it's a bit just a shame it's taken sony this long to kind mm -hmm. of match microsoft's really kind of forged a path with his adaptive controller so mm -hmm. it's like come on sony catch up like <laughs> catch up sony yeah. um yeah, Microsoft, we give them a lot of credit for that, too. We've covered that quite a bit. Uh, Sherlin's talked about it. Jess Condit, who wrote this up, also visited Microsoft to talk about their thing. Hopefully, we're going to get a, a better look at this soon. Mm. Let's go on to some of the weird stuff from CS. And I feel like this is the real reason we go to CS, right? Like, a lot of this news we expect to see. We, we know all the chips are coming. We know um, some new TV stuff are coming. But tell me about toilets. What will That's CES to do toilets. for my toilet? Yeah, and everything it seems. Everything, everything. Yeah. Um, one of the first things we review, we wrote up this year, um, is Vivo's um, oversized toilet clip-on, which Huge. is something that kind of sticks at the front of your toilet, and it is in the location of your pee stream, so that it can test your urine and send results to the phone. Um, useful for residential care, elderly, and healthcare service providers. This thing looks like a nightmare. It looks like it was not <laughs> made for anybody who actually has to sit on the toilet. You know, like I don't I'm just the I don't, I don't know why it has thing. to go there. That's why does it have to sure. go there? Yeah, yeah, clip somewhere else. Like or at least get all the, the washlets, the all the kind of companion washlets go on the side. Mm -hmm. Why can't this thing go on a side and just have an arm around that gets yeah. to the piece? They, they put their full sensor like right up front. Uh, so I guess you're you're putting your legs over it. Maybe it's like a, a theater chair, you know, where you're reclining a bit, so you have to recline. <laughs> You have to recline to use the toilet. Um, oh my god! Yeah, it, it, I mean, it looks hardy at least, and if it's it's meant for like red, residential care and hospitals and stuff, mm -hmm. it means it can survive, survive a beating or you know repeated use. Mm -hmm. That's that's the argument I'm going for, and I won't hear a word against it. I feel like the more interesting one is with things um, five hundred dollar uh, toilet computer. So it's five hundred dollars, but it's a little. It looks like one of those toilet cleaner pucks, and it sits at the front of your toilet, and uh, it uses. It can analyze your pee also with uh with a bit of a phone app too. That's Come on, cool. mate. That's that's a Chromecast just put in a toilet. That's bowl, a Chromecast, isn't it? yeah. <laughs> I want to. I mean, I do want to stream from my toilet, so yes. Different meaning for stream, right there. Mm, good stream. Good stream. Yeah. Um, a lot of like different. It uses uh. Let me see here. So Dan Cooper wrote this up. The microfluidic system, he says, is like the litmus test-esque strips you see in the doctor. So it's doing a lot to basically test your health, a lot of different things. Um, we've seen a couple different things like this. Uh, there was also a super expensive uh, toilet seat, which I don't have the link to right now. But Yeah, that, um, that rings a bell, yeah. That, that, that didn't seem as wild to me because I'm somebody who I did spend a couple hundred dollars on a little Toto uh, toilet seat for my for my you know one of my toilets so i see the benefit of that going to the computex once really sold me on the idea of uh you know using a little toilet bidet uh these seem interesting but certainly seem more on the health side of things um ben you asked a good question in our notes he's wondering if like um this could be a path towards like thc breathalyzer type things that people are looking for maybe something you could just put on you know put in somebody's home if you're worried about their drug use or if law enforcement wants to track that i don't know that's that just seems a little odd um moving away from toilets is hollow rides uh, vr technology and hollow ride is a company we have covered quite a bit weirdly like their whole thing is that um, they want to put VR while you're in the back seat, and like the VR will kind of work in tandem, like as the car is moving around. We first demoed it in 2019. Roberto Baldwin yeah. did that with us, and this year at CES they announced a retrofit kit that um, will be 199 or as part of a 799 or as part of a 799 dollar package with a VR headset. Um, and the idea is that you can sit in your back seat and you can go through some VR experiences. That's okay. Sure. I feel like a lot of people get sick when they just try to read while a car is moving, you know, like doing VR where your sense of like movement and gravity is already like out of your control in a car seems like a recipe for disaster. I don't, would you want to do this, Matt? I think like 
I think we've seen it a few times because I think often car companies are like, oh, VR, cool. That's the next mm-hmm. best thing. That's mm-hmm. a great way of kind of orienting this new vehicle as a cutting edge car. And it's more of like a sales pitch than it is a real thing. Like, I am sure there are people with more money in the sense that would be more than happy to retrofit the back of their car with this kind of stuff. But yeah, mm-hmm. I think <laughs> travel... Nausea is a very real thing that's totally definitely going to kick in. Even like the Oculus, um, the MetaQuest 2, yeah. using that in the backseat of a car seems like I don't, I don't know if I'd ever want to do no. that. I did used to see people in New York on the subway with the Quest, like yeah. at, during a trip. I'm like, okay, that's, they're moving and they have enough sense of like not hitting people around them, but uh, not something I know if I'd want to try. And people were talking about this, like, hey, it could be good for the kids. All a kid wants is an iPad. Or something like an iPad in front of them showing their shows. Um, they would rather have Peppa Pig than one of these things, you know? Yeah. And Peppa mm-hmm. Pig is cheaper. Peppa Pig is cheaper and uh, I don't know, maybe better for your brain. One thing that I found to be really cool, we wrote up Bird Buddy's Smart Feeder, um, which has a camera to give you stills and videos of hummingbirds as they come up to, to get food. That's pretty cool. That's something um, I... It's so niche. It's, it's so, so niche. If, if you don't live in a city, and honestly, if you do live in a city, when I was in Brooklyn, like there were hummingbirds like all over the place. Really? I was, I was near a park, so maybe that was why. Oh. And I was near Prospect Park, which is a pretty... I don't think park. I've ever seen a hummingbird in my In real life. life. Yeah. You, you guys are missing, missing out. Missing out. Because <laughs> uh, basically we have a huge hummingbird feeder outside of my kitchen window here. Uh, and I'm in like... Georgia suburb, like maybe 20 miles outside of Atlanta. So not that far from the city, but we have a ton of hummingbirds. Like they're always coming and going. And like to have a way of just like seeing who's coming, like they tend to be repeat visitors. Sometimes when I'm riding uh, on my deck in the, in the backyard, hummingbirds will just like hover in front of me saying, Hey, what's up? And move on. Like they do. They, it's weird. They, they know what's up. They know how to thank the people who are feeding them. So I don't know. I like this idea. <laughs> it's cool. I think uh, kids will like it. And also people who live in not maybe not in the middle of a city. But if you live somewhere where you want to see what the birds are doing, that sounds pretty cool to me. That's Bird Buddy's Smart Feeder. Um, GE unveiled a $1,000 stand mixer <whistles> with a scale and voice control built in. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure. I mean, wow, it's so much <laughs> That's so it's much money. So much money. It's also a stand mixer, so it's also huge. You know, like <laughs> I, I have one here, and we never get to actually use it in the kitchen because it's just like I don't, I don't want to lift that upstairs and set it up. And I'm it all... starting to notice a trend that you're just not willing to move things around. I'm very lazy. In my back hurts <laughs> all the time. So that is that is me. I mean, that is that's just your thirties, right? That's just like I don't want to do any unnecessary <laughs> movement, please. Heavy Especially with back. two kids, like I, all my energy right now is just like picking up the kids and re- you're fighting with them all day. <laughs> um, something else, uh, something I threw in here because the name of the company just seems like a big mistake to me. Uh, Shift All announced a high-end Steam VR headset and affordable body trackers for VTubers. Daniel Cooper wrote this up. The company's name is Shift All. Mm-hmm. You look at it, and I'm just like. Do you call yourself shitfall? All I all I see is shitfall. I'm sorry to this company, but <laughs> RIP your name. Not great branding. I mean, uh, my favorite bit of uh, this, uh, the, like the technology that Shift all is showing off, is mm-hmm. the thing, in, like in the picture. Uh, check out the whole story on Engadget.com. Mm-hmm. But this thing that goes over your mouth called Moo Talk. Now, Moo means like <laughs> no, like nothing. It's like um, the negative. So. The no talk. So the idea is you have this Bluetooth microphone that would just kind of block out your noise leaking so you could do those calls in a public space and people not hear it, which I love in a kind of very lame way of... It's a VR muzzle. Yeah, well, it's a VR, which is which is obviously from the outset sexy. But yeah, like all of these things are so bizarre and they've got this poor guy demoing them all at once. This is, so this is rough. He's this got is the new VR... version of Voldo from Soul Calibur, basically. Yeah. Pretty much a VR doll, VR old, VR old doll, yeah. VR old doll. Yeah. Now that's that's a good cultural reference. I'm very mm. glad we made that. If you know, um, you know. If you know, you, you know. know. You know. I know you were excited about Hasbro's 3D printed figurines, and this looks pretty cool. Yeah. Where like, they this were doing is this totally, at the show. Yeah. Yeah. This is totally a thing I would have done if I was at CES <laughs> this year. I'm not sure what I'd get my face printed. I think we mm-hmm. settled on maybe RoboCop, but with my lame haircut. I just think that would be quite funny. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, they, they've teased this for a while. Um, we've we've got our old story on the. Like, so we haven't covered it yet from the CES floor, but apparently they are scanning people's heads 
and offering up figurines during the show. So they mm-hmm. must have got the speed of the process down. Uh, cool. Yeah, the idea is that they're using like for, form lab technology to kind of scan your head, get the coloring, you know, the tone right and your eyes right. And then boom, you're the Red Ranger from Power Rangers. That's cool. As, as I've always wanted or a Ghostbuster or what is this? G.I. Joe? Yeah, Joe, I think. Joe. Yeah, yeah, anything that Hasbro. I think X Wing Pilot you can do as well. Get some Star Wars stuff in there. Mm-hmm. Um, I think what would be really cool is like you could like you could get a figurine made of you for your kids' favorite mm-hmm. series. I think that's, that's really, pretty cool. That'd be really cute and cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Although I I don't know, it's not really Hasbro stuff anymore. I don't, I'm trying to think like what Hasbro is. Transformers Hasbro. Yeah, but no, it seems like Hasbro has at least got the licensing to do this mm-hmm. for all those all those Hasbro properties That's previously. Cool. That's super cool. Yeah. It's glad. Yeah, we need to get this demo in real, like actually going. Um, which let's, let's... which Engadget editor would you like to see as a Hasbro figurine? We need to make Sherlin um, a Power Ranger as she wants to be. Like I Brilliant. feel like, or Sherlin as He Man is He Man Hasbro. <laughs> Surely he's Hasbro, right? Yeah, uh, I feel like all the big ones. Sh- uh, Sherlin as Megatron. Yes, because <laughs> that's that's truly her final form. Oh uh, no, no! What's the one with the like the cassette tape bird that comes out of his chest? Sound sound wave, sound, sound, wave. sound crash. Yeah. yeah, that's what she that said. is. That that would be totally surely. And another yeah. weird story that we don't have quite written up yet, but um, there was a series of events that happened yesterday where I saw, hey, Paula Abdul is at yeah. CES. Uh, showing off smart glasses so i immediately texted her i was like you gotta go see this and she actually <laughs> made her way there and she did a demo she sent a photo of uh Sherlin with paul abdul and uh paul abdul shorter than Sherlin, like significantly so that was she is surprising. a she is a she tiny, tiny pop she legend tiny. she tiny pop legend um yeah. so yeah we're, we're gonna have that story at some point i believe Sherlin's even trying to get her on the podcast for a segment at some point so excellent we're, we're calling her shots we're gonna try to get paul abdul but i i grew up with paul abdul that's kind of cool and she's doing smart glasses so we're gonna we're gonna have some stuff written around that soon um other other news i want to let's talk mm-hmm. about the, uh, the the avocado avocado, right avocado fruit scanner uh-huh. I, rev- I swear this actually popped up i think like the company launching it it bubbled up middle of the year last mm-hmm. year so here it is actually doing it so the idea is like you know the fact almost definitely only the fanciest grocery stores mm-hmm. would have a, a, a scanner that will tell you if your avocados are ripe but then wouldn't you want it in your house oh you i'm kinda, so confused i feel like you'd want it in the grocery store like let right along the scale or something like or maybe actually as part of the scale mm. um avocados are the hardest thing though because like you, you kind of have to get up and feel them like so many yeah. times right so you kind of know you want it to be a little squishy but not too squishy you want it to not look like totally dead brown you want there to be some green in there that's kind of cool it's a cool idea um i hope it's in scale maybe to restaurants and to other places too uh but certainly like i see this as being something that should just be there at a alongside the scale in a grocery store because that would really help yeah you know significantly yeah, i love it mm-hmm. It's very much a first world problem, and that's what CS is all about. Absolutely. I mean, I don't. My my thing is in the summer is we have really good watermelons down here, and mm. it is really hard to tell. Is this a good one? Is this like a nice juicy red watermelon, or is this like overripe? Like, there's a lot of stuff that's hard to tell, and you just kind of have to rely on sound and weight and stuff. Um, want to quickly shout out? We have somehow covered Y brush so several somehow. times. Several times. This is. Uh, this is a toothbrush that basically looks like mouth goggles and you put your teeth over them and uh, they brush your teeth. They brush your yeah. teeth. Um, they're coming to the US. That's the news. 10 second toothbrushing for $80 with the Y brush. Truly, truly what we go to CES for. The, the weird thing is that none mm-hmm. of us have actually tried it. I think because we That's don't want to have... Because I think none mm-hmm. of us really want to be on video or anything having our teeth brushed. I would totally do it. I totally do it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want... I don't want the fetishes out there to really that's what i'm saying that, that yeah. you know you gotta you gotta be careful yeah. um i think in ultimate ultimate weird news uh fufuli fufuli's pulsating cushion um it is something that is supposed to help with your um anxiety and actually we've talked about this company before because they uh they're the company behind the uh cat tail pillow pillow. yeah Yeah. the the headless cat basically the little pillow that has a tail and like kind of waves um this is cool sure i mean it's not ces unless you have Mm -hmm. an embarrassing photo of one editor just lowering himself for the sake of journalism this year yeah should lie 
this year's first July. Hello, Arlai. Um, go check out his video, Foofily. I mean, listen, we, we are creatures that just need comfort sometimes. So it's the simplest things that we need. Uh, I see people constantly being like, hey, I just tried a weighted blanket for the first time and my life has changed. So there's so <laughs> many things that can give us comfort. Um, that's kind of that's kind of cool. So I hope hopefully it keeps doing their thing. And uh, let us know, folks, like what what is your ideal gadget to help you soothe your anxiety? Is it a headless cat? Is it a dog that never has to be taken out for a walk? Is you it know? a TV that sucks itself to the wall? Ooh, uh, uh. Oh, there's so many things. Is it uh, just pee analyzing whenever you need? <laughs> analyzing on demand that is really what cs is all about <laughs> oh, um we are going to be wrapping up soon or at least let me do this again <clears throat> there's been a bunch of other news outside of cs but one thing i want to call out just real quick is um what the hell are you doing james cameron in an interview james cameron said that avatar 3 will likely introduce a third clan of uh navi that that are fire people and I think the uh, the people behind Avatar The Last Airbender are just extremely pissed at this point. I am pissed for them because I do remember when the first Avatar came out, they were like, oh, that's that's funny. We, we kind of wish he didn't do that. Um, and now we've had Avatar The Way of Water after book after, you know, what several books of Avatar The Airbender series and the Korra series um, have dealt with water, too. Now we have the fire people. What's that? What's next? Earth people? We already had the air people actually in the first movie of Avatar. So Earth, Earth people. I think James Cameron knows what he's doing and I am not a fan, but I do think Avatar <laughs> 2 is pretty good. So yeah, go check it out. Have you seen it yet, Matt? So in related news, I tried to watch the first Avatar mm -hmm. and got bored halfway. <laughs> Did you try to watch it at home? Yeah, on a big yeah. proper TV, not yeah. on a no, phone. No, 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 like that. no, no, no. Proper there, there, there's no at-home viewing of the first Avatar. The only reason you watch it is, is, is at the theater. And like to its yeah. credit, like given mm -hmm. how long ago it was made, it it holds up to most extent. Sure. Like it's not, it's not. The, C the CG the... actually, I think, went downhill since some of those earlier movies yeah. because of the Marvel stuff. Have to yeah, be I'm thinking out. of Black Panther. Yeah, yeah. They have to be pumped out real quick. The VFX studios are actually, like, hurting. So that's why if you go back and look at the CG and even, like, Lord of the Rings, you know, like some yeah. of the stuff we had in the 2000s um, looks good because they had more time to kind of develop them. So it took them longer to render, but the actual artistry of it um, looks a lot better than some of the stuff we have today. And, really and I know weird. everyone's, mm -hmm. well, like, okay, so in your, without spoiling too much, mm -hmm. do I really need to see the whole yes, of Avatar yes, 1? Yes. Oh, oh, gosh, oh, I'll watch the rest well, of Well, no, friend. to see the new one, you, you probably <laughs> yeah. don't need that. You probably don't okay. need that. But if you get a chance to go to the theater to see the revival of Avatar 1, it was um, worth seeing it in the theater. Like, that's the yeah. thing. I don't think... I don't think anybody should watch Avatar 1 at home because then you can see the, the worst of that storytelling. Uh, but you know what? If, uh, if you have the revival going and that is something that was in theaters in December, it'll probably be back. Totally worth it. And Avatar 2, totally worth it. I'm just saying, James Cameron, what the hell are you doing? We see what you're doing. We see you <laughs> love Avatar The Last Airbender. Is that, is that, that's so an much. Avatar joke right there, right? I see you. Mm -hmm. I see you. Got it. I got it. See. Proof. We could take a pause here. Are we, should I ping Carissa? She's connecting right now. Okay, good. We are going to bring on Carissa Bell. Hello, Carissa. Oh my God, it it's is the, the Marriott room. I can just tell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the extended PTSD. stay room we uh, all spend yeah. a week in every year. Um, you just have to unmute yourself, Chris, and we will check your audio. Hello, hello. Hello. Can you tilt your camera down a bit? Um, yeah, I'm using a pot right now oh, to prop up my laptop. Right. So that's, good. that's better. Oh, okay, this no, no, move okay. it. Move. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Well, it's no. kind of okay. Okay, sure. This looks good in center. Uh, ben seems stressed. No, it. I, but I'm not the video guy. So yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Let the video people worry about the video stuff. It was all good. And you're okay. on a webcam now. Hello, Carissa Bell. Carissa yeah. is a senior editor in Gadget who is on the ground. CS. Yes. So say hello to the live chat, Carissa. Hello, live chat. Hello. <laughs> uh, and thank you so much for taking time to sit with us and chat with us. Um, just to go over stuff. Or do you have your phone in voice memo mode nearby? Yeah. Yeah. Should I start it? Yes. Please yes, start that. Please. Okay. And we will do this recording. Yeah, so we have people in the chat saying that mm -hmm. uh, Avatar looked bad or first Avatar. Well, I mean, Avatar did not look bad, but it felt 
bad. The new I one? forget. <laughs> no, no, no. The first mm -hmm. Avatar. Was the first Avatar Pocahontas or was it Dances with Wolves? It was both. Both of those. Both, <laughs> both of those at once. Yeah. Okay. Good to go. You're recording, Chris? Yes, I am. Okay. We are going to bring you in and maybe we'll have some time to chat with the chat room afterwards. Uh, okay. Let me just pull up. I had a couple questions for you, Chris. <clears throat> Cool, cool. And how are you doing, Krissa? How have you seen good. so far? Yeah, I'm a little <laughs> tired, but it's not not too bad. Okay, that's good. And I see him a lot of running around and stuff. This is this your first CES? I'm going to ask you on the show as well. No, uh, it's my first Engadget CES. Okay. So you you kind of have a sense of the hell at least. Okay. Yeah. Cool. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to bring you in. In three, two, one. Let's move on to chat with somebody who's on the ground at CES, and that's Chris Bell, Senior Editor in at Engadget. Hey, Carissa, what's up? Hello, hello, from cold Las Vegas. From cold Las <laughs> Vegas. Oh, that is, it is, I guess it is usually a little chilly, but compared to New York, it was always a little warmer back in the day. How are you holding up? Um, pretty good. Today is the first day the show floor opens, so mm -hmm. I think things are about to get maybe a little crazier than they have been, um, mm -hmm. but I'm ready. You're totally ready. Have you already been, I assume, so typically when we go to CES, there are a lot of like early shows, preview events that we attend um, and meetings with other companies and stuff. I assume you've been running around all over Las Vegas for the past week? Yeah, I mean, not as much as uh, some, some of the folks here, but mm -hmm. definitely um, have uh, seen a lot more than I maybe thought I would even going in. <laughs> um, does it seem to you like the companies are like eager to get back going with CES and doing in-person stuff. It feels like in general, we've missed this, even though we sort of, I, I've grown to hate CES over 10 years, but that's just mm -hmm. me and my cold dead heart. Uh, but are people eager to be there? Are you excited to be there again? Yeah, I think it's a little bit weird still because it's, and maybe it's because we've been gone for so long, but it still feels like a little bit different mm -hmm, than, mm -hmm. than previous years. Um, there's definitely like excitement, like, seeing people you haven't seen in a while, you know, sure. even talking to people on the floor, they're like, oh yeah, this is our first year back too. Mm -hmm. Like everyone's kind of like still like getting into it. I think, you know, like the people that are here, especially like the smaller companies, of course, like they're excited that, you know, to, to be here and, you know, get in front of people. Absolutely. And this is actually, this is your first CES with Engadget. Also, I think probably the first time you've meeting a lot of people on the team too, right? Yeah, that's right. It's been uh, <laughs> it's been a lot of fun to actually. It's like, so meet weird. Everyone. Carissa got hired like right basically before the pandemic began, so that meant we're all we just remote. Yeah, we're not saying we're blaming her for the pandemic. Mm. But... <laughs> I can't help but notice the timing. Yeah. <laughs> there. Um, so, Carissa, you typically cover social media. Has there been actually uh, anything like along your beat that you found at the show? Um, not yet. I have okay. a few things on my schedule uh, later this week that might might turn into something. There's a lot of like metaverse mm -hmm. kind of stuff, but mm -hmm. um, nothing that's really caught my eye just yet. Gotcha. Is it, what's the most interesting thing you've seen so far? Um, well, one of the most interesting things I actually can't talk about yet. It's going okay. up uh, later today, but I think it's All right. going to be pretty cool. Um, there is some cool TV tech here though. Like there was uh, a TV that I haven't actually seen yet, but uh, Sherlyn went to go see it, where mm -hmm. it, like, wireless TV that, like, vacuums to the wall. Yeah, the second yeah. TV. We've been um, talking about it. <laughs> yeah, a lot of, like, a lot of people have been talking about that. Um, I mean, there's always cool TVs here. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely, definitely interesting to see, like, more wireless TVs. Mm -hmm. Have you gone through, did LG do another, like, wall of OLEDs again? That is something, it's usually worth walking through their booth just for, like, whatever the heck they, they put up there. Yeah, maybe they have. I mean, today's the first mm -hmm. day that it opens, so I haven't mm -hmm. I haven't actually been into the, the floor yet. I am going okay. to LG display later. They always have the cool, mm -hmm. um, you know, bendy OLED panels and like all their really cool um, cutting edge stuff. So I'm looking forward to that. Gotcha. What's the silliest thing you've seen so far? Because you've done you probably done Pepcom and CES Unveiled, which are like the big preview events. What, what weird stuff have you come across? Oh, man. Um... <laughs> <laughs> well, there was uh, the like emotional support pillow thing. The pillow, yeah, the huggy yeah. pillow, yeah. Um, that was strange. Um, <laughs> I feel like they should just give that to to everybody attending CES. <laughs> yeah, we should just come with the lanyard. You need this. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, put it in the backpack that they give out sometimes. Yeah. Have you met Paula Abdul? 
Um, I saw her. I did not actually go hang out with her, <laughs> but um, I saw her. I can confirm she was there at Pepcom. Uh -huh. That's okay. So can you she confirm really she good. is tiny? She is. <laughs> <laughs> That's our main takeaway, and she's doing smart glasses. We'll hear more about that from Sherlyn at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's cool. Like, how? So, how are you? You have been there since when? Since Monday, Carissa? Yes. Yeah. So we typically fly in like pretty much after the new year, and we all kind of settle in. Um, we are going to be deciding the Engadget CES awards soon. Um, what are you feeling good about? Because um, I know what what is your awards category? We can't spoil who's uh, gonna win, but we could talk about the process. My awards category is tech for good, which mm -hmm. is kind of a new one um, that we're sort of combining like sustainability and like environmental stuff into kind of like this broader, I guess, kind of feel good category. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really know exactly. And I, the question is going to win probably then. Yeah. Honestly, it's been hard to find <laughs> stuff. Like we've been, you know, they have, CS even has this like sustainability kind of like mm -hmm. as a, an actual theme this year. And, you know, we've been going to every single thing that we can find that's like, um, you know, we're doing uh, smart composting or, you know, this recycling or, you know, whatever it is. And it's been like pretty difficult to find things that can actually qualify. Like there are some interesting things here. Unfortunately, like some of them are just not new. Like there was this um, garbage can that provides like data analysis for restaurants about okay. like their food waste, Okay. Um, which yeah. is pretty cool, but you know, it's like a year old. So <laughs> um, a lot of that, that's also one of the, I think maybe the consequences of like CES coming back now is that there's a lot of stuff here that they're showing off at CES for the first time, but it's actually been out for like a year. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, makes it a little difficult for us. Yeah, that's kind of actually. I think other shows are going to be doing that too. I saw the Sundance lineup that's going to be happening at the end of this month. They're actually going to show some some movies that premiered last year at Sundance because people want to see it at the show. Mm -hmm. So I guess that makes sense. Cool. Any any major takeaways, Krista? Like, what are you looking forward to? Like, as you guys are starting to wrap up the show. Yeah, I mean, just one thing that has been cool to see, especially for me, since I, you know, don't usually get to cover uh, these things so often anymore is, you know, I remember like, I feel like for the past few years, we've been seeing a lot of, um, you know, flexible displays, foldable mm -hmm. devices, kind of, you know, um, you know, a lot of companies kind of like experimenting with this type of tech. And, you know, the earlier shows when we would see these, they, like, they seemed pretty prototypey, I guess, yeah. you know, yeah. like mm -hmm. these did not seem like something that was ready at all. Like they're kind of cool concepts. Um, so it's been kind of cool to see these companies now like move this pretty far along. So we're starting to see more of these in actual products people are going to be able to buy they look a lot more um finished so like to me that's cool if you're somebody who you know sort of gets excited about um you know new display tech or just kind of like interesting form factors gotcha cool anything else you want to mention carissa or we could just wrap your section right now it's all good um no i think that's it but okay. definitely more to come sure thank you so much carissa where can we find you on the internet these days um, I mean, I'm still technically on Twitter, not yeah, tweeting, yeah. <laughs> not tweeting as much these days. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're all like Twitter with caveats. Uh, are you on Mastodon yeah. or anything else yet? Uh, I am on Mastodon. I need to start mm -hmm. using it. Um, okay. Yeah. Find, find Chris on Mastodon if you can. Um, I feel like Mastodon does feel like a good energy, even though the crowd there can be annoying at times, but yeah. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you. Do you want to stick around for any Q and A with folks? Um, sure. Cool. All right, we could do a quick Q and A with with chat, and then we will finish yeah. the episode right after. Yeah. Okay. So, chat, uh, let us know what your questions are yeah, for what are your someone questions? on the floor at CES. What have you sees... wondered about CES? Yeah. Yeah. Ben did pop a quick question in mm -hmm. though that I would I would like to hear Chris's answer on is like uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to like uh, pandemic y protection and stuff. Are you are you walking around with a face mask? Um, are yeah. most people walking around with face masks? What's the situation? Yeah, I'm definitely wearing a mask anytime I'm in uh, sort of like a crowded area. So, you know, Pepcom unveiled, my mask stayed on mm -hmm. the entire time. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I try to keep it on walking through the casinos as well and stuff like that, too. That's just um, general. In general, we should all have masks to survive. Yeah. Vegas. Be in Vegas. I mean, yeah. even pre-COVID, <laughs> like CS was known for people getting sick and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I will say you definitely see people in masks, but it's not the majority of people. Mm. Gotta, gotta love it, people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, chat is a little quiet now. So it's they all are good. giving out free COVID tests. 
So. Well, that's oh, no, that's actually really good. That's like, great. You stock up on them and then mail some of them to me, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need also, to go get them. <laughs> they expire faster than you think. So I feel like a lot of people who stocked up last year. Yeah, seriously. You're going to have to re-up. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. why I'm talking about it. Um, mm -hmm. And apparently, like, Queens, New York is just awash in COVID tests these days. Mm. I was talking with a friend who lives in Queens, and they're just there are people that are just like sitting in parks, like you know <laughs> they'll they'll set up a card table or something, yeah, and uh, they will just be giving out COVID tests. I love it. Of like, <laughs> love it. It's great. We, uh, we need more of that. Oof. Yeah, I, I uh, mean. Well, mm -hmm. Queens got hit really hard by COVID also. But there was another uh, question mm -hmm. um, from uh, Nivik Tech 26 that asked about uh, wireless headphones at CES. So mm. um, what are the new wireless headphones that people have seen? Carissa, have you seen anything? Oh, um, there were the, I think it's the drop headphones. Mm -hmm. Um, we're at Papcom last night. I, I didn't get over to that booth, but I know there's some, some people on the team who are excited to see those um i think those are the only ones that i've kind of heard any any kind of real buzz about um but that's also not uh mm -hmm. maybe not the category i was following yeah uh check out billy Steele's reporting and gadget because he is our resident like uh, audio guy and headphone expert so he's i i know he's reported on some there hasn't been like anything huge like nothing yeah tremendous from what i've seen yeah one of the cool ones, uh, I, again, written by Billy Steele, is uh, mm -hmm. Wise Ear. So it's, these are neural earbuds, and mm -hmm. um, you can use your jaw clenching to skip tracks and stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh, we so were talking kind of, about it, that. Yeah, yeah so yesterday. truly hands-free in a way. Uh, truly so truly hands-free. Yeah. May, not, may not work for me. Just yeah, like those were jaws always clenched. So. <laughs> <laughs> constantly <laughs> skipping, constantly. Skipping. Yeah, no, it's just constantly like going through two seconds it of needs, songs. It needs like, to remind you, please. It's like people on social media. Please relax. Like, un unclench your jaw. Unclench yeah. your jaw. Okay, well, yeah, but then you're getting back into the Amazon Halo thing of like, it sounds like you're yelling at someone. Please unclench <laughs> your jaw. It's just going to constantly be yelling at you. But uh, uh, yeah, I was saying yesterday uh, after our show planning meeting that anybody else who's actually read the book Starship Troopers, mm -hmm. they talk about that all the time they talk about how mm -hmm. like they want the soldiers like hands to be free so like you're not like fiddling with yeah, your radio yeah. or something you're always like biting down to switch your con comms channels and i thought that i learned really a monster but uh he had some good interesting like concepts yeah. yeah uh uh cool cool okay let's let you get back to the show chris and we will just wrap the show here okay thank you so okay. much and yeah, drop in you. your audio okay okay we'll do ben elman on slack cool okay Thanks, Thank guys. you. Bye. Thanks, bye. Before we get into the yes. rest of the episode, I do want to say hi to uh, Muhammad Janjuna, who said some really nice things to okay. us. Uh, they said that they're the first person seeing you from Pakistan. I nice. can't confirm that, but love your reviews and keep the good work going. As always, like, I really love seeing when people like identify what countries or mm -hmm. regions they're watching from. So always let us know it's fun to see like such international viewership but, absolutely uh, let's get into our picks and let's get out of here let's get out of here um but before i ask do you have any pop culture picks you want to shout out matt or i do it's in the spreadsheet i'm okay. ready to go okay cool cool, cool. <clears throat> let's move on to our pop culture picks and uh matt what do you have for us this week uh so i have as always a not particularly contemporary one um <laughs> i've started playing a lot of the assassin's creed games even though i've played a lot of them in the past i started playing valhalla and then playstation plus extra took it off the free games Aww. so that i will never play that game you, now, have, to, you have to buy it now. no i will never play it now because they've ruined it for me yeah so i went back yeah. and replayed uh assassin's creed odyssey so that was one of my christmas games odyssey's fun. Um, yeah yeah it's quite fun um played as the man this time so it was a little bit different mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it's it just reminds me that none of these streaming services, they don't always, they aren't always going to work how you want them to. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen, I know people when with uh, the Xbox's Game Pass, like sometimes they will take games off the service as well. They do, they do. Yeah, these companies just need to telegraph it a lot better. Because I had no mm -hmm. idea why mm -hmm. it stopped working. It, it's uh, unclear, to... but also like I think the idea of like, hey, this is in the library now. It could leave the library. Um, it does. Xbox also does a thing where you get it. You could buy it at a discount. So I did that. For that Spirit would be Fair smarter. Yeah. A I, games where I was like, okay, this is going soon. But if you want to keep playing it here, have a deal, you know? Yeah, it was this. It's discounted at the moment because January sales. But um, yeah, they just 
it wouldn't hurt them to program in a, like a yeah, pop-up yeah. you get pop-ups for all kinds of stuff sony's so bad now. sony's so bad yeah. about their user experience in general um did you ever play assassin's creed uh origins uh, I've heard that is the one. And yes, I love I Origins. Yeah, I, I like Origi- Origins. Origins so and Odyssey are, uh, mm-hmm. are vying for my affections mm-hmm. for sure. Uh, um, Odyssey like took that concept into like big superhero mode. Like you just get all the power super early, and like everything feels too big. Whereas Origins was like, oh, this is grounded. This is a nice story. And yeah, and they introduced it the, the bird part mm-hmm. quite nicely. I felt like mm-hmm. that was the one that kind of pulled that off the best. For but sure. I'm thinking because on PlayStation Plus you do get some of the older ones but they're remastered now so i think assassin's creed 3 is my favorite so hmm. i might replay that perhaps it's uh, a, or maybe it's amazing like it, how one. far <laughs> this show has come so like this game has come so far to mm. to be honest like i remember hating the first assassin's creed because like great concept but as a game it was not great like actually yeah. uh the storyline and playing it but two really really got things going so yeah great thank you matt how about you? What's your pick this week? For my pick, actually, it, it's a whole bunch of things. I'm going to cheat. <laughs> and I'm just going to feature uh, the top 10 of 2022 movies uh, that I chose for my podcast, The Filmcast. So check that out uh, over at thefilmcast.com. Um, I've given you all a lot of recommendations. And if you want to hear like the, my top tops of the year, they're actually in there in text, but I'm not going to spoil it here. Um, everything you want to catch up on from last year that you may not have. Um, I, I think every movie we mentioned is pretty good. And we all kind of agreed on number one, too, which I was happy to see. Like, that just felt really good. So check out the film cast top 10 movies of 2022. Okay, <clears throat> let me just do this wrap and we will go. Thanks for joining us, folks. Our theme music is by game composer Dale North. Our outro music is by our very own managing editor, Terrence O'Brien. The podcast is produced by Ben Elman. You can find Matt online at where, where can you find you, Matt? Uh, I am still on Twitter, but hardly using it as well at mm-hmm. that Matt Smith. That's Matt with one T and the same uh, name at Instagram. I guess I'm on there a little bit more. And yeah, you can catch me on those platforms. Very cool. Yeah, I, I'm still like in the process of trying to leave Twitter, but I keep getting wrote back in. So anyway, I'm mm-hmm. at Devendra on Twitter. I'm also at Devendra dot mass. What is it? Devendra at Mastodon dot social over on Mastodon. You can join me there. And uh, yeah, follow me in the uh, Filmcast podcast as well. Email us at podcastandgadget.com. Leave us a review on iTunes and subscribe on anything that gets podcasts, including Spotify. Thanks, folks. We're out. Okay. Uh, Dev, can you do the first part sure. of the uh, thing again? Mm-hmm. Our theme music is by game composer Dale North. Our outro music is by our very own managing editor, Terrence O'Brien. The podcast is produced by Ben Elman. Okay, I think we got it. Okay. Hello, Chad. Uh, yeah, Thank you, you all for sitting with us. Stumbled yeah. a bit on uh, Terrence, and I wanted to make sure that Terrence. Yeah, was yeah. yeah. It sounded a bit like branching manager. Also. Right, right, right. Br- branch manager. Right, right, right. Uh, right, right, right. Yeah. So now we got uh, people from India um, saying that we're that they're watching we've got uh, tourism ghana saying that um oh, ghana, ghana is watching uh sometimes i remember uh like a few months ago someone would always bust into the chat and be like jamaica in the house and i'm like love yes jamaica. yes love it nobody from my birth country of guyana yet but maybe someday yes. maybe someday we'll get it when did you how old were you when your family moved to the US? Uh, i was three so okay pretty, yeah, yeah pretty so young. i grew up here but still yeah. there you know we visited we I talk about it. all the languages Sherlin speaks. Do you speak? Uh, no, okay. no, no. That's, that's the, that, that was <laughs> no, the no, British no. colony, you, you, the you only speak? British colony in South America. So <laughs> okay, thank, but... thank you, Britain. You're thank welcome. you, Matt Smith. You're welcome. It was me, <laughs> single-handedly. Yeah. Single-handedly. Uh-huh. Um, I'm pretty yeah. much, I am the Assassin's Creed Templars of the Engadget team, pretty much. <laughs> Uh, yeah, actually speaking be, of which, yeah. I haven't played an Assassin's Creed game since it's Assassin's Creed 2. I remember really? running around as Ezio Auditore, and then That's like half good once one. it, yeah, once it, yeah. I mean, that was a great game, but then, I mean, I got like busy with like school and stuff, and like stopped, uh, you know, be paying so such close They're attention. So and big. then by the time, They're, yeah, I started paying attention again. Assassin's Creed became a big franchise, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. means that like. I th- I was worried that it lost some of the stuff that was really good. Oh, it definitely. I will get yeah, back yeah. into Origins if you think that Origins is Origins is the I one. Think it Origins has a really it has a really rough opening for some reason. It feels like the opening maybe like fifteen minutes. So they just had a lot of weird editing there. But the story is good. The world is good. The vision of Egypt they give you is really really cool. So 
Um, the thing that really got me about Odyssey is it stopped being stealth pretty quickly. Like within a couple hours, you have superpowers and like you have people mm. hunting you down. And you're always fighting. Like it didn't feel grounded in a way. Um, Origins is super grounded with great, great voice acting too. Oh yeah, then I'm going for it. Mm -hmm. um, we've got D Man asking if anybody's uh, watching Witcher Blood Origin or no. Way of the House Husband. I no. want to see Way of the House Husband. Um, and then I saw like a friend um, watching um, Blood Origin and mm -hmm. saw that Michelle Yeoh was in it. I hear her. horrible things about about that that show. So I'm like, I don't want to see Michelle Yeoh in bad things. Sorry. This is a, <laughs> this is a pro good Michelle Yeoh account. Uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon 2 never happened. I, never, wonder, mm. I wonder what won best film for Davindra's movie podcast. Mm -hmm. Take a wild guess. Yeah. <laughs> Take a wild guess. It's, uh, uh, I was going to say the end that at the end of your pick, but I decided not. Some to. movie about a bagel, I think. It's a bagel. Yeah, it's a bagel. Bagels and talking rocks. Cool. Should I uh, stop the record? Okay, I think we're good, folks. Thank you yes. all for joining us, chat room. This is a long episode, but CES episodes tend to go long. And uh, we survived. Another CES is in the can. Thank you all yes. for joining us. And uh, you could do your credits, Ben. Yes. Okay. So, I mean, thank you to D Man, uh, Jonathan, and. Uh, hello to uh, Muhammad Janjuna again. So thank you everybody for watching the video stream coming to you via our video team, which is Julio Barrientos and Luke Brooks. Um, if you stuck around this long, you know that we live in a world of algorithms like better than the average person because you're that into tech. So rate us five stars on iTunes, rate us five stars on like Google Podcasts or whatever other podcast platform you tend to use. Tell a couple of friends about us. Give us that like organic viral lift and we will see you next week. See you, folks. Thank you. Bye bye.